जीवन यू कैन जस्ट स्टार्ट द मीटिंग अनिल जाधव सर विल ज्वाइनिंग Anil Jadhav sir will join shortly. Okay. Till then time I will giving you the access right. Huh? Post. Yes, yes. No, no issue, no issue. Okay, sure. Bye. Over to you. Uh, am I audible? Yes. Good evening, friends. Uh, myself Jivan Bosle from Team BBKS. I welcome you all for this uh, uh, training session arranged by Mumbai Insurance Institute and Bharati Bima Karmachari Sena. i want to take opportunity to uh, say thanks to our beloved young and dynamic leader uh, shri dinesh bhau bobate and all the committee members of mumbai insurance institute our today's lecture is on uh, motor odi and our uh, today's faculty is mr uh, pratik dayal sir sir is working as divisional manager at jaipur uh, do and uh, uh, sir himself is appearing for this exam still for benefit of uh, all the um, uh, aspirants sir is taking this lecture sir is very young and dynamic sir's lectures are very famous on youtube and uh, uh, they are getting more and more uh, views uh, day by day i also want to thanks my uh, fellow team members shri anil jadhav sir prasad sakarkar sir shri sagar deshmukh sir and uh, shri rishikesh De kulkarni sir now without wasting further time i request pratik sir to start his session thank you good evening everyone uh, am i audible am i my, my voice my voice is clear to everyone yes, yes sir are you yes, able sir. to yes, are you sir. able to access the screen as well yes sir okay yes, sir. Uh, first of all uh, good evening everyone uh, good evening, sir. thanks a lot uh, to the vvks team for giving me the opportunity uh, for uh, sharing uh, whatever uh, little bit of knowledge i have regarding motor odi with all of you uh, just like you uh, i am also appearing for uh, scale 3 to 4 exam this year uh, since the time is very short because the notification came at a very last stage uh, probably everyone have around 25 days to study uh, so uh, all i can suggest you is ki uh, study as much as possible make your concepts clear nowadays uh, questions come as far as my knowledge is concerned questions come on conceptual basis rather than mugging up things uh in motor od i would specifically uh, want to inform each and every one that uh, since last year uh, a little bit of concept has changed uh, in all the scales uh, 1 to 2 2 to 3 3 to 4 4 to 5 as well uh, some 2 to 3 questions have uh, also come from imts so it is my humble suggestion to each and every one Uh, all those who are appearing uh, i know it is uh, 65 imts are there it might not be possible to mug up each and every one uh, all the imts but still uh, at least uh, do not ignore it uh, if you are appearing for the exam because uh, sometimes uh, even once or twice you will go through imts at least you will remember some of the imts which might help you in solving the questions one or two questions extra because uh, last year also uh, they directly asked that which is this imt so uh, it is my suggestion in the start only that uh, go through imts as well and uh, try to uh, mug up or remember as much as possible uh, regarding questions related to uh, numerical questions uh, we'll be solving some of the numerical questions in the uh, this uh, ppt only uh, so i'll request uh, most of you to uh, take a uh, paper and pencil also with you so that you can uh, solve the questions and have that confidence ki okay if a numerical is coming in an exam uh, you don't have to leave it because sometimes there may not be an option for example if some here and there question comes sometimes numericals are scoring as well as they uh, help you in scoring good marks as well okay so this is my personal suggestion to all of you and uh, let's start with the lesson okay so uh, regarding motor insurance see uh motor insurance ppt i think uh, 
in scale 1 to 2 2 to 3 uh, 70 80% of the times questions come from whatever is uh, told or discussed uh, on the classes or through the slides uh, this trend i remember from class 2 to 3 years because i have been taking lectures from class 2 to 3 years in motor insurance at least in od section mm -hmm. uh, so i'll request all of you to understand the concepts and then accordingly proceed with the exams and try not to do the negative marking because uh, that is very essential okay see okay see we'll uh, split the class in uh, the way of uh, like first we'll go through some of the grs grs are most important questions not directly with the grs but uh, questions come in the form of application of various grs uh, a question might arise which can test your grs two to three grs in by way of one, one numerical only so you have to have a thorough knowledge of all the grs and accordingly, we'll proceed with the motor OD section. Okay. So start, to start with motor OD section, it means what is a motor? Motor OD covers all the vehicles. Uh, okay. One more thing. If you are stuck up anywhere, you are not able to understand what I'm saying. You can stop me in between. We can have, we can discuss it again. Uh, I'll try to solve your queries as much as possible in this class only. If not, then I'll try to clarify the same in the group also. Okay, so motor OD covers various types of vehicles. So basically, our motor tariff permits vehicles which are flying on the roads. Okay, motor motor tariff or the motor OD is not related to any vehicles which are running on the rails or on the water. Okay, so motor OD covers or the motor tariff is permitted for the vehicles which are flying on the roads. Be clear about it. Okay. So what are the various types of vehicles which are flying on the road? So there are different types of vehicles. You, most of you may be aware about that. Okay. There are private cars. There are two wheelers. There are commercial vehicles, commercial vehicles in the form of goods carrying vehicle, in the form of passenger carrying vehicle, in the form of miscellaneous vehicles. Okay. So firstly, we are categorizing the various types of vehicles. For example, private car. Second is two wheeler. Now, comes the commercial type of vehicles first in commercial type of vehicle comes the goods carrying vehicle vehicles which are flying or which are useful for carrying of goods okay so they can be further classified into goods carrying vehicle public public means those vehicles which are carrying the goods but not pertaining to themselves they are used for a higher end reward they are carrying the goods for some other persons okay then comes the public service vehicles or the passenger carrying vehicles. Passenger carrying vehicles then are further classified. For example, a taxi is a passenger carrying vehicle. An auto rickshaw is a passenger carrying vehicle. A bus is a passenger carrying vehicle. Now to further go into that, the passenger carrying vehicles, there are two terminologies used in passenger carrying vehicles. One is stage carriage and one is contract carriage. You should be aware about the terminologies of both, the, both of them. What is a stage carriage? Stage means that passenger carrying vehicle is carrying out or is transporting passengers via various stages of the journey. For example, in any city we live, there are local transport buses which are running from A point to B point and they are carrying or the, they are taking passengers from one spot, dropping some to another, again picking up passengers and dropping them to the various spots or various stations. So they ply through a fixed route and they are involved in carrying and dropping of the passengers. These type of vehicles are issued permits which are known as stage carriage permit. Okay. Next is contract carriage permit. For example, I am hiring a taxi to, tra to travel from Jaipur to Mumbai. So that taxi is bound by a contract between me and him. So these type of vehicles which do not carry passengers and dropping passengers in between various stages, they are involved in a contract and they ply from one place to another without stopping or without picking up and setting down of passengers. So these type of vehicles are known as contract carriage vehicles or they are issued permits in the form of contract carriage permit. So you should all be aware about the word contract carriage and stage permit. Okay. Also, I want, I, I, uh, I know uh, the timing may not be feasible for or may, may not be convenient for each and everyone since we are keeping the classes in the evening hours. Uh, 
बट सिंस द टाइम इज वेरी लेस एंड ओनली लिमिटेड क्लासेस कैन बी अरेंज ओवर वीकेंड सो आई वी हैव टू बियर विथ इट बिकॉज ऑफ द लिमिटेड टाइम शेड्यूल वी हैव बीन लेफ्ट विथ ओके बट आई वॉन्ट इट टू बी इंटरक्टिव वेर एवर यू आर स्टक अप जस्ट लेट मी नो ओके टू अंडरस्टैंड दिस कंसेप्ट एंड so that it can uh, bring clarity to each and every one of you before appearing for the exam so this is the concept in public service vehicles concept of stage carriage and contract carriage which each and every one of you should be aware about now all those vehicles which cannot fit into these categories any vehicle which cannot fit into a category of private car cannot fit into a category of two wheeler cannot fit into a category of goods carrying vehicle and public service vehicles or the passenger carrying vehicles aap have been clubbed together and put under miscellaneous type of vehicles so there can be various type of miscellaneous type of vehicles sir. for example starting from an ambulance excuse me sir yes tell me please excuse me sir yes uh, there is uh, so much disturbance in the background uh, i think someone's mic is unmuted uh sir can you check that because uh, voice is clear to me actually sir pro the problem is with your connection only everybody is muted and we are getting clear, clear sound we are yeah, getting I clear sound connection. i also cannot hear anything from the background actually so that's huh. why i think it's yeah. very clear noise, there is no noise in background we are audible but yeah 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 okay uh, okay so all those vehicles which cannot fit into this category of vehicles have been clubbed together and put under miscellaneous type of vehicles so what are the examples of miscellaneous type of vehicles for example ambulance uh, agriculture tractors and uh, cinema recording vehicles or uh, dispensaries all these vehicles have been clubbed together and put under miscellaneous type of vehicle so this is the basic categorization which is not related to insurance categorization of various types of vehicles okay let's go ahead so what are the different types of policies which can be issued in motor policy there can be various types of policies we are we are mostly issuing third party policy or package policy or package policy can also known as comprehensive policy in our daily life but there can be various types of policies which can be issued under motor tariff so what are the different types of policies first is comprehensive policy comprehensive policy means a policy which covers both the package portion as well as the or the own damage portion of the vehicle and the third party section of the vehicle second is stand alone third party policies okay as per law third party policy is to be mandatorily issued for all the vehicles which have a valid registration and which are plying on the road third is fire only policy we'll read about these policies in the later stages fourth is theft only policies policies which are covering only the theft portion of a vehicle policies which are covering only the fire portion of the vehicle then third party along with fire and theft policies so like it can be third party plus fire it can be third party plus theft and then next comes the motor trade policies motor trade policies are further classified into three types of policies one is transit risk policy second is road risk policy and third is internal risk policy we will go through each and every one of them one by one because questions last year also questions came from internal risk policies transit risk policy road risk policy so none of these policies can be ignored because questions have been coming from these policies as well okay okay so in 2018 a concept came in which long term policies are issued for new vehicles okay so government told that it is mandatory to issue five year long term policy for two wheelers and three years policy for private car so there was some amendment in these policies in the year 2020 so how it started there were various options for example first you can issue since third party is mandatory so there was an option of issuing five years two wheeler third party policy there was an option of issuing three years third party policy for private car there was an option of issuing five year long term motor package policy long term motor package policy means it is covering both the od and the third party section for five long years in case of two wheeler second it was an option of issuing od plus third party for three years for the new vehicle this concept is only for new vehicles and then there was an option of issuing bundled policy bundled means first year od plus tp and from second year second and third year tp portions in case of private car and or for four years you can issue tp policy but in 2020 there were many disputes regarding this 
बिकॉज वॉट हैपन्ड इज की एवरी वन फॉर देअर बेनिफिट और द मेनी डीलर्स सिंस द मोस्ट ऑफ दीज पॉलिसीज आर इशूड एट डीलर पॉइंट आर इशूइंग फाइव ईयर लॉन्ग टर्म पॉलिसी फ्रॉम वेरियस इंश्योर एंड कस्टमर डिड नॉट हैड एनी ऑप्शन टू चेंज दीज पॉलिसीज फॉर एग्जाम्पल आई एम नॉट सेटिस्फाइड विद सर्विसेज ऑफ एक्स वाई जेड कंपनी तो आई आई एम स्टक अप विद दैट पॉलिसी फॉर फाइव लॉन्ग ईयर्स इन केस ऑफ टू व्हीलर और थ्री ईयर्स इन केस ऑफ प्राइवेट कार सो देर वर मेनी कंप्लेन्स टू आई आर डी एंड हेंस दीज लॉन्ग टर्म मोटर पैकेज पॉलिसीज फॉर टू व्हीलर एंड थ्री ईयर्स फॉर प्राइवेट कार हैव बीन विदड्रॉन फ्रॉम टू थाउजेंड ट्वेंटी ओके secondly there was an issue of ncb also in these policies so now what is permitted you should be aware about this now what is permitted either you can issue five year tp policy or three years tp policy for private car or you can issue bundled policy for private car for three years and bundled policy for two wheelers for five long years bundled policy means first year you are covering both the od portion as the tp portion and for rest of the years you are issuing the mandatory third party policies this concept is clear sir <coughs> sir yes ma'am uh, is there any ppt for all these policies sir ppt means this is ppt only ma'am uh, that ppt screen is not shared uh, shared here sir so we are you, not you are not able to share uh, uh, see the ppt i am not able to see that ppt uh, page sir ppt is visible ma'am ppt is perfectly visible it's perfectly visible there might be any problem with your connection ma'am no no sir there's a no problem uh, where is the ppt sir that screen is not coming to me but we can ah, see yeah. this now it has come sir now it has come sir sharing okay. everything on ppt only sir one question yes sir yes please sir Hello. Yes, sir. Please ask. Sir, what is the date to start one year and three year in two thousand eighteen? Exact date. Exact date, sir. It is started in August two thousand eighteen. So exact date, I don't think you have to remember anyway. But uh, this concept started in August two thousand eighteen. Exact date, I don't think you are required to know anyway. Okay. Sir. If you still want to know the exact date, I'll uh, do the needful for you. Okay. But sir, please provide. Hmm. Please provide if possible. Ah, okay. No problem. Okay. Just a minute. Sir. Yeah, ma'am. Please tell me. Sir, you mean to say that currently we have one plus five year for a two wheeler and one plus three year for four wheeler, right, sir? TP. Exactly. Exactly, ma'am. Now, if you will go and purchase a new vehicle. uh there are only two options either you can issue five year tp policy or or you can issue bundled policy for one plus five sir your voice is not clear sir your voice is very low sir Now, very low ha huh? very low one second is a Hello. Uh, are you able to hear me or not? Now. No, sir. No. Uh, voice is very low, sir. Voice is very low, sir. sir we are low. able yeah. but very low. We are able but very low. Chat. Chat. Yeah. Yeah. Book clearly. Okay. What? What about now? No, sir. No. Same, sir. Uh, I am perfectly. Uh, I am hearing your voice. Uh, perfectly loud and clear sir others voice or okay. able to hear others voice is that that is louder but your voice has been come down sir i uh, my mic is on maximum actually yes, sir, earlier it was okay not sir audible, now it is low yes sir not audible another speaker yes, is audible sir let us wait one second one second just a minute
सागर सर प्लीज गाइड व्हाट अबाउट नाउ ओके 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 सर सर प्रतीक सर माइक माइक तो पास में सर माइक तो पास में ही है लो आ रहा है वॉइस क्योंकि एक बार काम करो कैप्चर किससे हो रहा है देखना चाहिए अपना हेडफोन से व्हाट अबाउट नाउ इट्स ओके बिट बेटर बट स्लो आई एम सर आई एम लो सर माइक इन माय हैंड्स नाउ सर तुम जगह हैंड्स हैंड्स फ्री आयत का सर कंटिन्यू सर योर वॉइस इज वेरी क्लियर टू सम इट इज वेरी क्लियर टू सम इट इज वेरी नो सर नो सर इट इज नॉट ऑडिबल नॉट ऑडिबल सर सर अनप्लग इट इट वाज परफेक्ट सर प्लीज रिमूव योर हेडफोन एक बार आगे लेट्स मूव अवेड अगर आपको इफ यू आर नॉट एबल टू हियर वील डू समिंग अबाउट इट ओके इज इट क्लियर नाउ बट रखो सब क्लियर आई एम गेटिंग वेरी क्लियरली इट इज क्लियर बट जो पहले आपकी आवाज आ रही थी उससे अब कम आ सर मैं आई एम सिटिंग एट द सेम प्लेस विद द सेम कनेक्शन वेस्टिंग टाइम लेट कॉन्सेंट्रेट मोर ऑन lecture and try to listen uh, how much voice is coming to sir please start aur uh, jitna low voice rahega na to aap concentration zyada doge okay I, i'll speak a bit louder also theek hai let us mute uh, all of please mute your mic so that probably the connection issue will also resolve with the time okay so uh, this is the concept which came for long term policies which has been in practice now okay khado okay so now let us move ahead and understand what are the uh, i can still some hear some voice in the background can you please mute, uh, mute your mic so that the voice becomes clear to everyone please mujhe bahar nikal jara main main jana acha main lage mujhe do andar please mute your mic now. okay uh, okay let us move ahead all are muted sir okay so now understand what are the various types of perils which are covered under motor policy we have to have a clear idea of what are the different types of perils which are covered hello sorry to disturb you the voice is not at all audible okay uh, ma'am ek bar aap mute kar lijiye uh, we'll see just wait for one or two minutes probably the voice will get clear ma'am just wait for two minutes can you please mute yourself okay thank you ha uh, so what i'm saying is ki uh, in case of motor there are 10 types of perils which are covered under a motor policy for example when we are going through fire policies we are going through engineering policies where it is clearly mentioned how many types of perils are covered under motor policy so similarly in motor also 10 types of perils are covered under motor policy which each and every one have to have a clear knowledge okay first is fire ignition lightning our vehicles are every day we are getting claims in which vehicles is burnt in fire okay we are paying those claims so why we are paying because fire peril is covered under motor policy second is burglary house breaking theft okay third is right strike whenever there is any rights and strike vehicles are getting damaged theek okay? hai we are paying those claims because in motor tariff there is a provision and there is inclusion of 
rights and strikes were used in the motor policy. Then earthquake, flood, typhoon, hurricane, storm, tempest, inundation, cyclone, hailstorm. Recently also there have been many floods in the hilly areas. So there was a lot of uh, claims which have been registered for the motor policies or the motor vehicles because all these perils are covered under motor policy. Okay. Next is accidental external means. What is accidental external means? This is the widest range where most of the claims come under this type of causes. Accident external means any means which is external to the own vehicle is known as accident external means. Okay. Next is malicious act. What is malicious act? For example, intentionally someone is damaging your vehicle. For example, uh, you are you have parked your vehicle, and when you go in the morning, there have been damages to your vehicle. So in most of the companies are requiring an FIR or uh, uh, for these type of losses, but these losses are covered under motor policy because malicious act peril is covered under motor policy. Next is terrorist activity, while in transit by road railways, if your vehicle is in transit, the loss is covered under motor policy and landslides, rock slides. So these are the 10 types of perils which are covered under your motor policy, which you have to have a clear idea. Okay. Sir, one doubt, sir. Yes, please. Sir, in malicious act, yes. if the employee uh, of the owner of the vehicle or some relations destroy the vehicle, is the claim payable, sir? Yes, yes, sir. There is no there is no uh, concept of willful misconduct. Okay. So any means, any pun, even your relative may damage your vehicle out of some uh, jealousy or something. Anything is covered, any malicious act on your vehicle is covered. But the insured person should not have damaged it. Yeah, definitely, sir. And we are highly uh, unable to prove such type of losses. But mm -hmm. any malicious act in which exact cause of accident is not known is covered under motor policy. Under oh, malicious thank, you, thank you. Okay. So now moving ahead. See, now there are some various exceptions related to motor OD. Some of the exceptions are common. Common means it is applicable to both the OD part and as well as the TP part of the policy. And some of the exceptions are strategically related to only the OD portion of the vehicle. Okay. So there are four major exclusions in motor policy. In that case, no claim is payable, neither on the OD part or on the third party liability part. First is vehicle driven outside the geographical area. Our vehicle are permitted to flying within India territories. There is an exclusion to this, which we will discuss. Uh, but if the vehicle is flying outside the geographical area of India without prior permission or without any extension, any claim arising on that type of vehicle is not payable or that is an exclusion for both motor own damage as well as the third party. The first is the ex uh, outside the geographical area. Second is limitation as to use. For example, a private car is there a private car cannot be used for carrying of goods or it cannot be used for carrying the passengers. So this is the limitation of a private car. A private car has to be used for the private purpose only. And if at the time of loss, it is found that the said vehicle is not used for the purpose for which it has been duly registered by the RTO, such losses are not paid for both the OD and well as third party section. Third is driver's loss. Any person having a valid driving license should drive that particular type of vehicle only. A, a light motor vehicle license person can drive a private car. A two-wheeler license person can drive a two-wheeler. So if, for example, a LMB license person is driving a goods carrying vehicle of 50,000 GVW, is the claim payable? No, it is not payable. Neither the OD portion, neither the third party portion. Now, tactically, courts may award whatever they want to, all that is different or the practical aspects of it is different. But in general, as per motor tariff, driver's clause is excluded. If we are not driving without a valid driving license for that particular class of vehicle, neither the own damage or the third party uh, uh, claims are payable under that policy. Fourth is war and nuclear risk. So these exclusions are the general exclusions which are applicable for both the OD as well as the third party section of the motor policy. Now there are certain exclusions which are relevant particular to the OD section. For example, first is consequential loss. For example, if you are driving your vehicle 
every day your tires are subject to wear and tear okay so wear and tear is not payable consequential loss means you are for example you hit your vehicle from the front bumper side now you have not taken the vehicle for repair to the workshop instead you are keep on driving that vehicle because of that part some further damages to the other parts is happening so that is a consequential loss so any consequential loss claim is not payable under motor own damage section second is depreciation wear and tear so depreciation wear and tear classic example is tires and tubes so every day they are subject to wear and tear so you cannot any customer cannot come to insurance company and say that ki, okay sir my this is my tire condition my tire condition has uh, been worn so kindly give me a new tire or kindly allow me a new tire so this is not possible only when it is accidental in nature we are allowing these type of losses okay third is mechanical electrical breakdown various types questions have come from this concept of electrical and mechanical breakdown let let me give you an example for example a vehicle is poorly maintained okay a vehicle is poorly maintained and due to the poor maintenance of the vehicle the brake fail okay the brakes of the vehicle fail and the vehicle uh, accident accidentally hit some other vehicle as a consequence of that there is loss to the vehicle so in that case if such a scenario comes in your exam what is the loss payable the total loss of the vehicle is payable total loss excluding the damage or the part of the brake shoe is payable so what will be the payable in is this, this case of scenario brake is not payable all other parts are payable exactly why is why it is not payable because this concept because this is a mechanical damage exactly because because this concept has come from the concept of exclusion of mechanical and electrical breakdown because the the brake shoe or the brake fail happened because of the mechanical breakdown of the brake shoe unit which is a mechanical breakdown hence but as a consequence of that if there is any further damage that is payable under the motor policy so you have to have a clear idea of mechanical and electrical breakdown okay next is driving under the influence of liquor and drugs okay for example there is an accident it has been proved by in the fir or with the relevant sections that that damage or the driver of the vehicle was under the influence of liquor is the motor od damage payable no it is not payable we are excluding such type of losses in the motor od section okay and for the tire and tubes if they are damaged as a result of accident then also we are not paying the full part we are paying only the 50% part of those losses i am not talking about zero debt policies and all those policies from examination point of view we will mostly concentrate on the things which are general across all the insurance companies so these are the types of various exclusions which are specifically related to motor own damage is it clear to each and everyone or is there any doubt sir one question yes jo aapne liquor wala case bataya uska tp me kya effect aayega hum od to nahi pay karenge what about you sir uh, waisa aapki tp class alag se hogi main bata deta hu recently there is a new defense i have also not studied motor till now i am going to read it but there is a defense available under section 152 i have mentioned in the slide also in which a defense have been given to insurance companies where they can contest claims where the driver is found under the influence of liquor and drugs so recently this has been amended under section 150 oblique 2 wherever you will read the tp section you can have a go through it also okay so i have a question yes ma'am uh, sir this uh, damage to tires and tubes 50% it is irrespective of the age of the vehicle sir yes ma'am it is irrespective of the age of the vehicle even the first year it is it will be 50% only yes, if it's package policy yes yes ma'am Yeah, okay. the package policy thank you Definitely sir not. it is not related with the age of the vehicle okay 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 uh, sir one more question yes. uh, during miss we are covering flood typhoon you told us yes. uh, and during uh, monsoon season uh, water logging is there and uh, yes. sometimes vehicles stop moving yes miss uh, water enters into engine so yes. that claim is payable ma'am what, what what do you think what do you suggest I hello think. hello sir your voice is not audible sir please ma'am i think it is audible to each and every one ek bar aap apna connection dekhiye it is audible only headphones it is audible uh 
see map that is a, again a classic example what you are telling it again a classic example of mechanical breakdown see what happens ma'am in your example case there is water logging a vehicle is moving through the water logged road so what will happen water will enter either through the engine or through the exhaust of the motor unit as soon as the water will enter into the engine it will seize the engine your crankshaft will break and you will you will not be able to turn on the vehicle that is again a classic example of mechanical breakdown so all these losses are excluded under motor policy and wherever any heavy loss comes or heavy rains comes in a particular area where there are water logging many claims comes to insurance company for settlement of these type of losses which we are unable to settle because all these losses fall under the category of mechanical breakdown that is the mechanical breakdown of the crankshaft or the engine assembly which is excluded under the motor policy that is why the concept of engine protection and so many other things have come into picture because no insurance company was settled able to settle these type of losses is it clear yes sir okay let us move ahead now understand what are the different sections what are the different types of motor tariff there are eight types of sections first is general regulation tariff for private car tariff for two wheelers tariff for commercial vehicles commercial vehicles have been further classified into goods carrying vehicle a1 a2 a3 a4 tariff for trailer tariff for passenger carrying vehicles c1 c2 c3 c4 miscellaneous type of vehicles road transit policies road risk policies and internal risk policies okay and then there is a proposal form certificate imts and statistical code so these are the eight types of different sections which are covered under motor to start with we'll go through the grs okay we'll understand the grs according to me what grs are important there are 46 grs i will tell you what are the concepts what are the important concepts of various grs from which questions have been asked in the previous exams also okay start gr1 insurance is not provided for vehicle on rails i have already informed you who says that gr1 tells us about that gr2 is proposal form when is proposal form required proposal form is required at the time of commencement of new cover or if there is any material change or the material alteration is there or in case of change of insurer in these three types of conditions proposal form is mandatorily required for the insurance company we may take or we may not take proposal form in general uh, is none of the concern this is what is uh, uh, told or informed in the motor tariff that when is the proposal form required mandatorily it is for a new cover whenever there is any material alteration or whenever there is a change of insurer in all those circumstances proposal form is mandatorily required okay third is policy forms there are two types of policies one is liability only policy and package policy now rating what about rating what the rating provided under motor tariff are minimum rates or maximum rates this question has come many times the rating provided under motor tariff are minimum rates or maximum rates these are minimum rates okay always remember that these are minimum rates i myself has done this question or uh, 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 negatively done this question in 2017 when i was first appearing for an exam so always remember the tariff or the rating provided under motor gr are minimum rates so if they are a minimum rates what can be done they can be further loaded and how much they can be loaded they can be loaded up to 2 or 200% of the tariff premium see uh, any person can have doubt ki see we are giving so many discounts so how can that rate be the minimum rate see discount is all together different thing the rates are given for reference which we are still following and we can charge higher rates than that also discount is all together a different concept it is not related to the rating provided under the motor tariff okay so always remember rating provided in the motor tariff are minimum rates and it can be loaded up to 200% gr4 extension of geographical area now the concept comes i was excluding some of the losses for both uh, motor I उटर 
ma'am it is it is the concept goes that way we can load it to up to 100% then we can further load it up to another 100% so on yeah. next renewal we can load it to up to further 100% ma'am it is not about renewal it is about ki first we can load it to 100% if it is still unsatisfactory we can load it to another 100% so in case in case in case a question will come there can be only two questions from this first what is it a minimum rate or maximum rate or what is the maximum amount or what is the maximum loading permitted for that so that can be 200% okay amne okay uh i was telling that extension uh, outside the use of a vehicle outside the geographical area is excluded for both motor own damage and the third party section but there is a provision under gr4 which allows extension of geographical area see you you can you will uh, remember that most of the goods carrying vehicle are flying between different countries when it trucks are going from india to bangladesh india to nepal so how are these vehicles covered we can extend our policies to cover the own damage and the third party section for six countries example bangladesh bhutan nepal pakistan sri lanka maldives so we can cover losses for own damage and third party sections if a vehicle is flying to these seven countries these six countries but gone are those days when this direct question will come okay so if we are covering the losses there has to be some premium for that so 500 rupees is charged 500 rupees is charged for giving extension of geographical area to these countries in case it is a package policy and 100 rupees is charged in case these policies or in case a liability policy is issued for these type of vehicles now you may ask now you may ask sir this 500 rupees is for each country or is it for all the countries see there is no uh, clarification in the tariff but this 500 rupees with the 500 rupees you can cover the extension of geographical area for all the countries 500 rupees is not separately charged for each and every country okay so i am clarifying this doubt so that you will not have this doubt in your mind altogether okay so this is the maximum premium or minimum premium sir which one ma'am Uh, this 500 is the maximum or minimum this is or fixed, it... this is a fixed premium ma'am there is fixed no concept premium. of maximum and minimum okay. 500 okay. rupees has to be collected if you are covering the extension of geographical area for any of these countries or all of these countries if it is a package policy and 100 rupees has to be collected if it is a third party policy okay sir thank you sir okay let's go ahead what are vintage cars i have been reading so many so many so many times in groups various discussions happening in various groups what is the discount in vintage car what is the discount in vintage car let me clarify it to each and every one 50% discount on tp portion 50% discount on tp portion and 25% discount on od premium is the final final this is the correct this is the correct discounting available for vintage car vintage car are the only cars which for which a valued policy can be issued under motor policy and what are vintage cars all those vehicles which are manufactured prior to 31st december 1940 are known as vintage cars and they have been certified by vintage and classic car club of india so 50% discount is there on tp portion and 25% discount is there on od premium is it clear you will have this doubt so many things are written under various uh, materials available in the market but i am clarifying to each and every one of you this is the correct and the so uh, what are the discounts uh, for vintage cars sir for od is it is uh, 25 just that's what i'm telling you yeah. 25% on od premium and 50% okay. on tp premium tp premium okay and this okay. is the this is the only policy in motor portion i think as far as i remember where discount in tp premium has been given i don't think there is any other policy in which there is a discount in tp port premium in the hmm. policy Okay. Yes, so 50% discount on TP premium and 25% on OD premium. This is correct, absolutely correct. Okay. There is no question about this. This is the correct thing which is there. Okay. What well, now? What are the classic cars? Cars which are in between 31st December 1940 to 31st December 1970. But there is no discount available in the tariff for the classic cars. And now, what are the valued policies as per GR7? Vintage car have been only the only policies. for which valued policies can be issued is it clear clear sir 
Okay, let's go ahead. Yes, sir. Now the concept of IDV comes. See, nobody is going to ask you uh, what is the IDV slab, what is the depreciation. Questions will come in the form of practical questions. For example, this in this year, this was the IDV or this was the actual room price. What will be the idea? What will be the IDV as on date or specifically date will be mentioned. So you have to have a clear idea of how, how the IDV is arrived at. First, IDV is always calculated on the manufacturer's listed selling price of that brand and model at the time of insurance or at the time of renewal. For example, today I am purchasing a vehicle and the ex showroom price or the manufacturer's listed selling price is 100 rupees. So what will be the IDV of my vehicle? It will be 5% less of 100 rupees. So IDV will be 95 rupees. Forget what we are doing in practical life. This is what actually should happen. Now, after one first year of my renewal, what will be the IDV? Normally, we are reducing the current IDV by 15% and so many things we are practicing in the market. All that is wrong. How do we calculate the IDV? For example, there is appreciation of my vehicle or the ex showroom price of the same make and model is increased by, for example, 10,000 rupees. So after one year, after one year, when I'm renewing my policy for the same make and model with the same specification of that vehicle, if the ex showroom price is found to be 1,10,000 rupees, the depreciation for the IDV should be on, not on 1 lakh rupees, but on 1 lakh 10,000 rupees. The current manufacturer's listed selling price or in the current ex showroom price is the basis for calculating the IDV. First, IDV for the first five years is calculated or still followed in the basis of the fixed depreciation schedule, which has been given in the tariff. After five years, insurance company and the insured can decide what should be the IDV of that particular vehicle. Okay. Whenever the loss exceeds 75% of the IDV, the vehicle or is categorized or under total loss category or constructive total loss category. Always remember this thing. Most important thing is whenever you are calculating the IDV, either at the first time or on the renewal, it is always calculated on the current ex showroom price or the current manufacturer's listed selling price of that vehicle at that time. If you are renewing it, the, what is the ex showroom price at the renewal? That should be taken into. See, in practical life, we are not doing all that R&D because nobody has that time. So what we are doing is we are taking the base of the previous policy and deducting it by 10% or whatever we are doing. All that is fine in practical life. But from examination point of view, what should actually happen? And believe me, many insurance companies are following this trend or this uh, concept of finding the current or the updating their database for the current ex showroom price and arriving at the IDV accordingly, which is the correct way of uh, uh, finding the IDV of any particular vehicle. Okay. This is the schedule for the first five years for calculating the IDV. Any new vehicle, 5% is reduced. So 100 rupees is the current ex showroom price. First IDV will be 95 rupees. Six to one year, 15%. One to two years, 20%. Two to three years, 30%. Three to four years, 40%. Four to five years, 50%. Okay. So let me ask you a question. Uh, if my current uh, ex showroom price is 100 rupees, okay, I have purchased a vehicle. Uh, for example, uh, five years back or four years back, uh, if there is no change, if there is no change in the manufacturing listed price, what will be the current IDV? For example, if I'm issuing it between four to five years, what will be the current IDV? 50 rupees, sir. 50 rupees. Okay. 50 rupees. Okay. So specifically, I mentioned that there is no change in the ex showroom price of the vehicle. Always remember that questions from this concept will definitely come in the exam in one way or the other. So always remember IDV is always calculated on the ex showroom price always and always. Okay. GR9. What is the depreciation for rubber part, nylon part, plastic part, tire tubes, batteries. Remember batteries, airbags. These are what is the depreciation in normal policy? 50% depreciation question in will come in the form of numericals. Well, they will tell you 
कि दिस इज द व्हीकल दिस इज द एज ऑफ द व्हीकल और दिस इज द रजिस्ट्रेशन डेट ऑफ द व्हीकल दिस इज वेन द एक्सीडेंट हैपन वन लैक रुपीज डैमेज टू द एयर बैग सो यू शुड नो दे विल नॉट टेल यू दैट दिस इज दिस विल बी अंडर फिफ्टी परसेंट एफिशियंट शेड्यूल यू हैव टू रिमेंबर दैट एयर बैग बैटरीज टायर्स एंड ट्यूब्स प्लास्टिक पार्ट नाइलॉन पार्ट एंड रबर पार्ट विल कम अंडर द शेड्यूल ऑफ फिफ्टी परसेंट डेप्रीसिएशन फाइबर ग्लास थर्टी परसेंट डेप्रीसिएशन ग्लास पार्ट देर इज नो डेप्रीसिएशन ऑन ग्लास पार्ट रिगार्डलेस ऑफ द एज ऑफ द व्हीकल पेंटिंग मटीरियल कॉस्ट पेंटिंग मटीरियल कॉस्ट विल बी फिफ्टी परसेंट डेप्रीशिएटेड आई विल एक्सप्लेन दिस पेंटिंग मटीरियल कॉस्ट पेट and all the parts other than these for example the metallic part the wooden part in one question i have read somewhere they asked wooden part so examiners are like sir for wooden part no schedule is given all the depreciation schedule this is mentioned here except all these parts rubber nylon tires tubes batteries airbag uh, uh, fiber glass glass and painting Uh, apart from th- that all the other parts metallic parts and wooden parts the same depreciation schedule is applicable so it is like for first 6 months there is no depreciation for 6 to 1 year 5% depreciation 1 to 2 years 10% depreciation 2 to 3 years 15% 3 to 4 25 4 to 5 35 5 to 10 years 40 above 10 years 50% depreciation there is no shortcut to it you have to remember this depreciation schedule if you want to solve the numericals without it you will not be able to solve any numerical in the exam okay you have to remember this thing rubber part nylon part plastic part tires tube battery 50% depreciation airbag 30% depreciation sorry airbag 50% depreciation fiberglass 30% glass parts no depreciation painting 50% okay painting material 50% i am repeating correcting myself painting material 50% and this is the depreciation schedule for all the other parts which includes wooden parts and metallic parts okay is it clear i hope all of you already know this thing yes sir yes sir okay great if you know this thing let us solve question number 1 i want each and every one to please participate and solve this question because these types of questions will definitely come in the exam if you want to solve these questions uh let us solve question number 1 i am giving you like this needs probably 1 minute to solve this questions take a paper and pencil and try solving this question Sir, sixty-six thousand five hundred. Okay. Any other answer? Sixty-six thousand four hundred. Also, someone told. Is there any other answer? I think excess of hundred rupees also will be there, na? So, what will be the answer, sir? Sixty-six four hundred. Subject to excess. Okay. See, always remember, in exam they will not let tell you, <laughs> ki what should be the excess, or they will not tell you that you have to deduct the excess. 
it is understood that you have to have the knowledge of GR40, which is compulsory deductible for that particular type of vehicle, because that has to be mandatorily reduced from the claim amount. So by application of one, two, three GRs, one question will be framed and all your GRs on the knowledge of all your GRs will be tested by the form of one question only. Is there any other answer? The correct answer to this question is 66,400. See, IDV is 1 lakh rupees. Whenever uh, I want to uh, tell you some of the key points in solving the numerical problems. First, before solving any numerical, first write down what is the age of the vehicle. Second, write down what will be the depreciation in solving that question. Once you are correctly able to do that, 80% you are going to solve the question or you are going to answer it correctly. The moment you uh, do not calculate the age of the vehicle correctly, then that means you are going to answer it wrong. And most probably you are going to find that option in the answers available and you are going to do it negative marking. You will think that I am doing it correctly, but that will not be the correct answer. Okay. So in this question, CC is 150 CC. So you have to have a knowledge of what is the excess. What is the excess for two wheeler? 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 50. 100 rupees. 100. 100 rupees is the excess for two wheeler, irrespective of the CC of the two wheeler. Okay. Met with an accident on 25, 2023. And when is the date of registration? 1 11, 2022. So what is the age of the vehicle? First step is finding the age of the vehicle. Age of the vehicle is between six months to one year. That is the first step. First find out the age of the vehicle, six months to one year. So what is the depreciation? For plastic parts, depreciation is 20%. For metallic parts, depreciation will be 5%. Clear? For first six months, there is no depreciation. Six to 12 months, 5% depreciation. Okay. Now go ahead. So, uh, metallic part 60,000. So, what is the depreciation? 5% is the depreciation. So, answer it is 57,000 rupees will be allowed. Rubber part 1000 rupees. Rubber part depreciation is 50%. So, 500 will be allowed. Glass parts, there is no depreciation. So, 1000 rupees will be allowed. And labor charges 8000 rupees. Now, labor charges are always and always allowed in full. So, total will be 57 plus 500, 57, 500 plus 1000, 58,500 plus 8,000, so it will be 66,500. Now, for all those who did 66,500 as the answer is wrong because you have to deduct 100 rupees excess from in case of two wheelers. So correct answer will be 66,400. Is it clear? Yes. Is it clear? Okay. Yes. Now, before going to question number two, I want to tell you one more concept of painting. See, uh, many people get confused in how to calculate the painting. Always remember point number one, whenever painting amount is given in any question, it means it includes the painting material cost and the painting labor cost. Whenever doing a painting of any part, what does it include? It includes material and the labor charges. Okay. So whenever painting cost is given, do not confuse yourself. Just remember that it includes both the labor and the painting material charges. Okay. And in that case, 12.5% is the depreciation whenever painting is given. 12.5% is the depreciation wherever painting charges are given. Second, so then what is, what did I tell you in the last slide? Painting material cost 50% depreciation. I told you, what is that? See. There are two methods of arriving at 12.5% depreciation. Uh, please un listen to it carefully. Okay. For example, 100 rupees is the painting cost. So 100 rupees is inclusive of material charges and the labor charges. 75% cost of the painting is considered as 75% cost of the painting is considered as labor charges and 25% is considered as painting material cost okay and painting so so out of 100 rupees 75 is the labor which is payable in full 25 rupees is the painting material okay 
पेंटिंग मटीरियल फिफ्टी परसेंट डेप्रीसिएशन इज अपलाइड सो ट्वेंटी फाइव रुपीज का फिफ्टी परसेंट डेप्रीसिएशन विल बी ट्वेल्व पॉइंट फाइव परसेंट सो टोटल अलाउड विल बी सेवेंटी फाइव रुपीज लेबर प्लस ट्वेल्व पॉइंट फाइव परसेंट इज पेंटिंग मटीरियल चार्जेस विच इज अलाउड सो टोटल इज सेवेंटी फाइव प्लस ट्वेल्व पॉइंट फाइव इज एटी सेवन पॉइंट फाइव परसेंट सो आउट ऑफ प्लीज रिपीट सर ओके आई विल रिपीट अगेन प्लीज रिपीट सर ओके ओके सी Hundred rupees is the painting charges. Painting charges includes the painting material cost and the painting labor charges. Out of hundred rupees, twenty five is considered as the painting material charges. Painting material charges. Paint lag raha hai, right? That paint has to be there. that costing is there for the paint material, right? So twenty five percent is considered as painting material cost, and seventy five percent is considered as the labor for that painting. so labor is always allowed in full okay so 75 rupees will always be allowed in full out of that remaining 25 rupees 50% depreciation is applied for the painting material charges for the painting material cost so out 50% of 25 is 12.5 right so 12.5 plus 75 rupees of labor you will add this right so total comes to 87.5 so 87.5% charges are allowed out of total painting cost okay so do not confuse yourself 99.9% .9 of the questions they will not be bifurcated you will be given a simple painting charges for from for applying or the claim payable in that case you have to deduct 12.5% depreciation and arrive at the answer okay now solve question number 2 Probably in one minute you will be able to solve this question. Sir, two lakh five thousand. Two twenty. Two twenty, sir. Any other answer? Sir, two lakh five thousand. Two twenty. Two twenty. Sir, my answer came two lakh fourteen thousand, which is not appearing. So that means it is wrong now. Calculate again. See anybody can mug up GRs, anybody can mug up IMTs. The main purpose of this class, or main purpose of me sharing this, is with you is you should be able to solve the numericals in exam correctly. See, I cannot uh, make you learn GRs. You have to learn it yourself, right? I can only make you or uh, tell you the important points of these GRs, but solving the numericals I can help you, and that is where the difference lies in scoring 80 marks or 85 marks. Or scoring seventy marks, that is where the difference lies. Finished. Two lakh twenty thousand. Ah, two lakh twenty thousand. Ah, yes, sir. Number, okay. Ah, uh, Radhesham sir. Ha, Radhesham sir, what is two twenty, sir? Metal parts forty percent depreciation. Metal parts. Fifty percent depreciation, glass part hundred percent payable, labor charge is hundred percent payable, battery cost fifty percent depreciation, painting charge eighty seven point five percent payable. So total one thousand excess. Yes. See. Ah, uh, okay, please mute yourself. See. First step. What did I tell you? Always remember. First step. Calculate the age of the vehicle. Age of the vehicle. Agar yes. aap, if you have calculated the age of the vehicle correctly. You have solved sixty percent of the answer. Okay, so what is the age of the vehicle in this case? Age of the vehicle is between five to ten years in this case of in this case. So depreciation for plastic parts will be fifty percent. For glass parts, there is no depreciation. For metallic part, five to ten years, it is forty percent depreciation. Okay, now start metallic part sixty thousand. Forty percent depreciation, so sixty percent has to be allowed. So thirty six thousand metallic parts. Twenty thousand rubber parts, glass parts thirty thousand always allowed in full. Labor charges always allowed in full. So seventy thousand. Battery cost I have told you battery cost comes under fifty. Thirty thousand. So thirty thousand. Painting forty thousand. So thirty five. Thirty five thousand. Percent of this is thirty five thousand. Total comes to two lakh twenty one thousand. And what is the excess for a private car? One thousand. For one for thousand to fifteen hundred cc, thousand rupees is the excess. If the same question 
the cc would have been 1800 cc answer would have been 219000 because for see it is checking your uh, gr40 as well in this question so you have to have the knowledge ki what should be the access for different categories of vehicle if this is the private car if this would have been a uh, miscellaneous vehicle he would have told ki this is the ambulance so what would have been the difference the difference is for ambulance or the miscellaneous type of vehicles the excess is 0.5% of idv subject to minimum of 2000 rupees so you have to calculate the 0.5% of idv if it is more than 2000 that should be the excess for that category of vehicle so question can be framed in many ways these are some of the examples so that you get that confidence to solve that question is it clear to everyone yes sir okay great let's move ahead yes sir these are the answers i have calculated the answers uh, because many people might not be able to join the class at this point of time so i have many many times i have uh, people used to tell me ki sir where are the answer where are the answers how to solve the answers so this time i have added the answers also that how you should calculate this so that you get a clear idea in future also even for example 10 days from now if you are going through okay let us try to solve the questions so i have put the answers also how to calculate these type of questions okay next come to gr10 what is the geographical zone for geographical zones uh, for private cars motorized two wheeler and commercial vehicle under c1 and c4 c1 is uh, commercial vehicles uh, passenger carrying vehicles less than 6 seating capacity and c4 are commercial vehicles two wheeler for all these type of vehicles india is divided into two zones zone a and zone b all of us are insurance professionals so all of you must already be knowing this zone a eight cities come all the four metro cities along with ahmedabad hyderabad bangalore and pune and rest of india zone b commercial vehicles excluding c1 and c4 all they have for all those vehicles there are three zones zone a zone b and zone c zone a is, is the metro capital cities zone b is the state capitals and zone c is the rest of india I, all of you are already knowing this okay next is uh this is not important this is ha huh, okay gr12 short period policies many times questions comes are short period policies permitted in motor insurance yes short period policies are permitted under motor insurance and what is the short period rate these are the short period rates there is no shortcut to it in fire also there are short period rates there is a little bit of difference in fire short period rates and motor short period rates you have to know this thing but question will not come from this question will come for third party policies for third party policies are short period policies permitted or no extension of third party policies is permitted no this is the question which will come nobody is going to ask you what is the short period rate but the major concept lies is ki for third party policy short period policies are not permitted and extension obviously also is not permitted for short period policies okay See some of the GRs. I am going fast so that because I don't think questions will come from this, uh, so that I can stress on main important GRs and clarify you from which the questions can come and or have been coming in the recent four to five years. Okay, display of premium. Everyone knows OD TP is mentioned separately. Computation of premium. There is nothing important. Payment of premium. Full premium we are paying all together. There is no process of installment in premium. Minimum premium. Rupees twenty five is the minimum premium. for policies issued to specifically design or modified use or blind people handicapped people mentally challenged people 25 rupees is the minimum premium and 100 rupees is the premium minimum premium for all other class of vehicles okay transfers see in case of transfer a third if if there is a third party policy third party policy is automatically deemed to be transferred on the case of transfer or in the case of change of registration of the vehicle it is automatically transferred in case of od section application from the uh, new new owner has to be received in office within 14 days of transfer of vehicle and then transfer of the policy can be done okay based on his request okay and what is the charges 50 rupees is the transfer fee in case of transfer of vehicle and for transferring the vehicles first ncb has to be checked and ncb has to be recovered because ncb always goes not on the vehicle but ncb is always the right of the 
the owner driver of the vehicle or the owner of the vehicle it is not according to the vehicle which we'll understand okay so this is the concept of transfer change of vehicle not important hire lease agreement for example what many people do not understand this concept of hire purchase agreement what is hire purchase sir so let me clarify you for example i am the owner of the vehicle okay i have given my vehicle as per some agreement i have given my vehicle to some x y z person so he is the hirer okay he is the hirer who has hired my vehicle for a particular period of time for example 5 years i am the owner of the vehicle now all the rights of the vehicle have been passed on to the hirer who has hired the vehicle as per the agreement of the hire purchase agreement so he is responsible for the maintenance he is responsible for the insurance so all those insurance policies will be in the name of the hirer the person who has hired the vehicle an owner interest will be protected by endorsement so he will be responsible for the payment of the premium policy will also be in the name of the hirer so this is the hire purchase agreement similar is the lease agreement i am leasing my vehicle to some another person so he will be known as lessee i'll be known as lesser so policy will be in the name of lessee and lesser my interest will be protected by endorsement but in case of hypothecation the concept is different in case of hypothecation what is hypothecation i have taking i am purchasing a vehicle and i am purchasing a vehicle on loan i am taking a loan from xyz bank so in this case the policy will not be in the name of the bank the policy will be in the name of my name only and the bank's interest will be protected by hypothecation this we are doing every day in our life so i do not have to explain you each and everything in this cover note cover note in motor is valid for 60 days for how long a uh, cover note is valid in case of fire policy in case of fire 30 days 30 days okay. so this is the difference in fire policies it is valid for 30 days in motor policies a cover note is valid for 60 days okay gr24 cancellation of insurance and double insurance many 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 times question come from this concept mainly the concept of double insurance okay now first we'll go through cancellation of insurance if the insurer is cancelling the policy if the insurance company is cancelling the policy we can cancel the policy on pro rata basis everyone knows this thing if the insured is requesting to cancel his policy we will cancel the policy on short period rate we will retain the premium as per short period rate just now what i told you and we will refund the premium accordingly now what is the concept of double insurance for example for one vehicle two policies are issued for one vehicle two policies are issued so those two policies can be issued either from the same insurer for example both the policies are issued from new india insurance or both the policies can be issued from different insurer one policy is issued from new india one policy is issued from national insurance so what is the concept the concept is whenever there is a double insurance of a vehicle always the policy which is commencing later jo baad mein issue ho rahi hai that policy has to be cancelled okay now if that policy is cancelled now what about refund so in case there is double insurance from the same insurer both the policies are from new india only full refund can be allowed full refund can be allowed in case it is from two different insurers that then also the policy commencing later has to be cancelled and refund will not be full premium all the full refund it will be on the basis of pro rata it will be always pro rata refund okay this is the first concept second concept in case due to some requirement of some banks or financial institutions the instead of commencing instead of the policy commencing later the policy which is commencing earlier has to be cancelled there may be circumstances where banks is insisting ki no no this policy should not be cancelled the policy which is issued previously has to be cancelled in that case the refund will be on short period basis remember this concept question might 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 most probably will come from the concept one more question will come now you know that ki if it is a same insurer full refund if it is from two different insurers it will be pro rata refund if it is due to the earlier policy is cancelled then short period policy this is fine in all these refunds minimum premium has to be retained 
last year or last to last year the same question came full refund refund on short pro rata basis full refund subject to minimum premium retention pro rata refund subject to minimum premium retention this is a small line given at the end of the gr or many short notes or many notes provided in various tariffs might not have this line also so everybody was aware ki if it is from the same insurer it will be full refund but does minimum premium has to be retained yes it has to be retained so many people were confused so do not get confused in either it is full refund or short period or pro rata minimum premium always has to be retained is it clear is it clear is the sir, no doubt, sir. yes sir sir that minimum premium plus uh, pro rata premium definitely sir okay yes sir thank you sir. sir for example if it is full refund you cannot do full refund you have to retain the 100 rupees minimum premium plus the gst of it for example 118 rupees so you have to refund the 118 rupees although it is full refund but minimum premium has to be retained by the insurance company 100 rupees plus gst yes, yes nobody sir, will you. ask you what is the minimum premium but it is 100 rupees plus gst so even though it is a full refund in practical life also try cancelling a policy in our system in new india i am talking about new india i think most participants are from new india only so in case you are cancelling this policy try uh, doing full refund in that case also minimum retention of 118 rupees is done for each and every policy okay thank similarly, you similarly similarly for uh, in case you are going to office tomorrow trying issuing a policy of vintage car just uh, do the rate of registration as 1930 or whatever it is okay 1930 or any date and select yes it is from vintage car and try how the calculator is in the answer sir can you please mute ah, yes sir uh, okay so uh, you will understand that 50% will be uh, discount will be given for tp portion and 25% discount will be given on od portion you can try this see i am uh, not telling you uh, just because i have read it somewhere i have practically tried it and tried issuing a vintage car and seen how the discount has to be adjusted so it is 50% on tp and 25% on od portion similarly the concept of double insurance also try doing it minimum retention has always minimum premium has always to be retained this question is, might come in any scale and this question has been coming since many long years okay these are not important ha the concept of no claim bonus this is a important gr uh, and very easy also see sunset clause everyone knows this thing policies which are issued from 1st july 2002 to 30th june 2003 at that time the policies which were issued from that time there was a concept of earning ncb in the slab of 55 and 65% 55 or 65% many persons many people do 60% also and say it all, all of the above i am 100% no there is no 60% slab in sunset clause the clause is only for 55% or 65% accruing ncb in the range of 55% and 65% okay this concept was for two wheeler private car and commercial vehicles and what is the ncb concept all of us are insurance professionals we know this thing ncb always is on the od portion ncb is always based on the original insured and not on the vehicle that is why whenever we are transferring the vehicle we are recovering the ncb okay one more thing whenever if a vehicle is in the name of a company and the person is driving the vehicle as a employee so whenever the vehicle is transferred in his name the ncb can also be transferred accordingly okay ncb certificate once issued is valid for 3 years in case the policy is not renewed within 90 days ncb will expire okay this might be extended to 365 days in case of military persons okay for policies which are issued on liability plus fire or theft risk i told you there are many types of policies liability plus fire and liability plus theft policies the od the specifically the ncb is applicable for the fire and the theft part theek okay? hai ncb earned abroad for example you are earning an ncb for example there is concept of ncb in some other countries outside india that ncb can be availed in india also and the concept of ncb is not for motor trade policies okay and what are the various ncb slabs 
ट्वेंटी परसेंट ट्वेंटी फाइव परसेंट थर्टी फाइव फोर्टी फाइव एंड फिफ्टी दीज आर ऑल द एन सी बी स्लैब्स अवेलेबल इज इट क्लियर द कंसेप्ट ऑफ एन सी बी यू आर यू ऑल ऑलरेडी नो दिस थिंग राइट क्लियर शाल यू मूव हेड ओके इफ एवरी थिंग इज क्लियर नाउ सॉल्व क्वेश्चन नंबर थ्री प्लीज यू हैव वन मिनट टू सॉल्व दिस क्वेश्चन ओके व्हाट इज द आंसर सी ओके सी Have you stopped solving, or uh, you are not able to find the answer? Some bolding we I don't know. Sir, how to find which, which is metallic part? Which one is which part? Ma'am, there is no shortcut. Bolding uh, is glass. Is a light headlamp. Whether it will be counted as a glass item? सर प्लास्टिक आइटम हेडलैम्प इज ए प्लास्टिक आइटम ओ ओके ओके सर लास्ट ईयर इन स्केल 2 टू 3 आई एम जस्ट टेलिंग यू आई एम जस्ट शेयरिंग योर एक्सपीरियंस यू नो व्हाट वाज आस्क्ड वायर हार्नेस असेंबली व्हाट वायर हार्नेस असेंबली सो दीस आर द वेरी इजी पार्ट्स हेडलैम्प मोल्डिंग लास्ट ईयर इट वाज वायर हार्नेस असेंबली सो एंड द क्वेश्चन वाज आस्क्ड व्हाट विल बी द डिप्रीशिएशन people were confused wire uh, is uh, will come because wire always have a rubber coating on it so it should be under plastic part or it should be under metallic part this was last year question wire harness assembly there is so the no question answer. number 3 answer wire is coming is a plastic part 500 correct answer is 38500 let us not waste any more time the correct answer will be 38500 the age first step age of the vehicle age of the vehicle is 5 to 10 years so front bumper 50% depreciation 2000 headlamp is a plastic part so 2500 ac condenser is a metallic part 10000 rupees so 
depreciation will be 40% depreciation. So 6,000 will be allowed. Labor, 8,000 will be allowed in total. Paint, 8,000, 12.5% depreciation, 7,000 will be allowed. Glass parts, 10,000, 20,000 will total will be allowed. Okay. Salvage, uh, then molding. Molding, what is molding? Molding is a plastic item. So 500 will be allowed. Glass sealant is again a plastic item. 2000 rupees, 1000 will be allowed. Pick up and drop charges. Are pick up and drop charges payable under motor policy? No, sir. No. So it will be excluded under the, for calculation of the claim. Salvage, 1000 rupees will be reduced. Fiberglass, 5000 rupees. 30% is a depreciation. So 33,500. So total, uh, total will come to, total of this will come to 40,500 rupees minus salvage of 1000 minus excess of 1000 rupees. So correct answer is 38,500. With the experience, with the solving more and more questions, slowly and slowly you will be able to understand which part comes under which categories. Okay. But every year new questions or new types of questions are coming and different, different parts are being added. Like the time, like I informed you last year, it was wire harness assembly. Okay. And just for information to all of you, wire harness assembly will not come under plastic part. It will come under metallic part. Okay. At least what is asked, we should be clear. What can be asked, we can just try to apply our knowledge there. But in case uh, whatever is asked, at least that much we should know. So wire harness assembly, it is a metallic part and the depreciation of the metal or parts will be. Because see, whenever there is a doubt, see all other parts, metallic parts, wooden parts have been clubbed together. So wire harness assembly will come under that category. Is it clear? 38,500? Is it clear? Yes, sir. Okay. Great. Uh, sir, it is clear, but uh, my problem is that I am working in accounts department, so I have no ideas which is metallic part and which is plastic part. Ma'am, then you have an added advantage in uh, accounts, right? You cannot have advantage in all the sections. You have to learn. I do not have no knowledge of accounts, so I cannot take accounts as a subject. So, see, uh, there will be many advantages and uh, disadvantages according to the department in which, uh, which we are working. But uh, we have to have the knowledge, ma'am. With the more questions you will solve, slowly you will be able to understand uh, that uh, what should come. Okay. Sir, what is glass sealant, sir? Ma'am, glass sealant, see, glass, whenever a glass is broken, you have to stick the glass to the front part, right? So that okay the rubber or the whatever the material which is used for sticking that glass is known as glass yeah. sealant. Okay. Okay. And why this pick up and drop charges is not included, sir? Ma'am, because pick up and drop charges are not payable. Okay. Try solving is... question number four. Okay. See, even if I will not explain you last five slides or 10 slides does not matter because you have to mug up those slides. Uh, this is important because this is where the practical application of motor comes. So I am more focusing on solving the, your numericals and making your concept clear rather than uh, repeating the same things which you already may, might be knowing or will have knowledge by reading. Somebody has answered uh, 21,500. Okay. Any other answer? Any other answer, please? If you know the concept, you will solve it within, you don't have to even lift your pen for this. If you do not know the concept, you will not be able to solve it. Any other answer? Sir, 
सर जस्ट ए मिनट यस सर टोइंग चार्जेस आर थर्टी थाउजेंड फाइव हंड्रेड Answer of one of the participants has changed from twenty one five hundred to twenty one thousand now. Okay. Uh, another option is thirty thousand five hundred. Okay. So this. So this towing charges are payable, na? Yes. To what extent? You have to tell me. Twenty two five hundred. Okay. There are various answers: twenty-two five hundred, thirty five hundred, twenty-one five hundred, and twenty-one thousand. Answer is B. Out of the four, out of the four, out of the five uh, options given, four four answers have come up. The correct answer uh, for this will be twenty-one thousand rupees. Okay. How the twenty-one thousand came? I'll tell you. See. Uh, 2019 model 20 lakh is the idv which is irrelevant for this question the truck met an accident on 10 5 that means that is also irrelevant for solving this question but still first step is always finding the age of the vehicle because you will not know if it is required or not but age of the vehicle you have to find out so the age of the vehicle in this case is from 19 to 20 20 to 21 to 20 to 23 to 24 4 to 5 4 to 5 okay GVW is given eighteen thousand rupees for private car and two wheeler. CC is the concept for goods carrying vehicle. The concept comes from gross vehicle weight GVW, right? Okay. So he has not opted for IMT three twenty three. All of you are insurance professional. What is IMT twenty three? Cover for lamp tire tube. Cover for lamp tire tube. Lamps. Tires, tubes, mud guard, Tube. bonnet, and paint material is not. But in the case of, the, but in this case, it is not covered, no? Yes, ma'am. That's what I'm telling. Uh, IMT the concept. Please listen. The concept of IMT 23 has originated from the concept of IMT 21. IMT 21 says, in case of goods carrying vehicle, mud guard, bonnet, lamps, tires, tubes, paint material is not payable. Now, the concept of IMT 23 came. What IMT 23 says? He, all these parts can be covered up to fifty percent of their assessed amount. If you can, you are opting for IMT twenty three. Fifty percent of the assessed amount. What does that mean? For example, ten thousand rupees bumper is there. Fifty percent is the depreciation, so five thousand. Five thousand. Fifty percent of five thousand. So twenty five hundred can be paid if you are opting for IMT twenty three. Fifteen percent extra premium is charged for this. That you do not have to remember, but. In this question, he has not opted for IMT twenty three, so that means that means paint work will not be covered. So that means paint will not be covered because lamps, mud guard, bonnet, paint is excluded if IMT twenty three is not opted. So what will be paid? Front windshield, windshield is glass part, so ten thousand full will be payable. Plastic twenty thousand, so ten thousand of that will be payable. So twenty thousand rupees total towing charges. What is the incoming charges for private car? Fifteen thousand, fifteen hundred. Fifteen hundred rupees is the inbuilt towing for private car. Private so what car. What is the inbuilt towing for commercial vehicles? Two thousand. Two thousand five hundred rupees. Okay. Two thousand five hundred is the inbuilt towing. So total will be ten thousand plus ten thousand plus two thousand five hundred. Total will come to twenty two thousand five hundred. Now what is the excess for eighteen hundred GVW vehicle? Excess is fifteen hundred rupees. Excess is fifteen hundred rupees. So twenty two thousand five hundred minus fifteen hundred is twenty one thousand. Correct answer for this question will be twenty one thousand rupees. Okay. If you do not remember the excess as of now, you have to remember it before going to the exam. Okay. If you do not remember it now, it's okay. It's fine. I also do not remember so many things right now. I have not even started motor as of now. But you at that time you should know because at that time they will not tell you the excess. They might just tell you the GVW. So you should know 
कि फ्रॉम जीरो टू सेवन थाउजेंड फाइव हंड्रेड इट इज फाइव हंड्रेड रुपीज सेवन थाउजेंड फाइव हंड्रेड टू सिक्सटीन थाउजेंड फाइव हंड्रेड आई थिंक इट इज थाउजेंड रुपीज अब सिक्सटीन थाउजेंड फाइव हंड्रेड इट इज वन थाउजेंड फाइव हंड्रेड रुपीज सो ट्वेंटी टू थाउजेंड फाइव हंड्रेड माइनस फिफ्टीन हंड्रेड सो ट्वेंटी वन थाउजेंड इज द करेक्ट आंसर फॉर दिस क्वेश्चन इज इट क्लियर सर वन डाउट सर यस सर आई एम टी ट्वेंटी थ्री पेंटिंग वर्क दैट मीन्स पेंटिंग मेटेरियल plus painting labor hmm. both the things are not payable hmm. that is throughout the vehicle yes or only for the bonnet and side parts no 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 any work not related any work to the so, yes so the so the the loss is extended also so any painting work that is labor plus material cost will not be payable yes sir yes sir thank you sir thank you okay okay uh let's move ahead i have solved tried to solve or i have put before you four numericals uh citing different concepts so that at least you apply concept it will become clear and i am very hopeful that you should be in a better position now to solve a numerical before the start of this class whatever concept you had or whatever concept now you have you should be in a better sir. position yes sir If in this question, if he had opted for IMT twenty three, then please explain, sir. If he would have opted for IMT twenty three, then front ah. windshield ten thousand is correct, same. Plastic part twenty thousand, ten thousand, same. Towing charge is two thousand five hundred. Paint work eight thousand rupees. So paint for eight thousand. First we have to calculate how do we assess eight thousand rupees. First we deduce twelve point five percent depreciation. So twelve point five percent depreciation will be seven thousand rupees. Okay. And how will will be paid? Seven thousand fifty percent of that will be paid. So three thousand five hundred rupees will be payable. You got it? Okay. Thank you. Three thousand five hundred. No, sir. Please explain this again. Ma'am, first, what is? I told fifty percent of the assessed amount. Okay. So what is the assessed amount? Twelve point five percent depreciation. Please mute yourself. Yes. Then everybody. First. we assess the amount what is assess the amount 12.5% depreciation is applied so if you apply 12.5% depreciation or you can uh, allow 87.5% 87.5% of 8000 is 7000 rupees and 50% of that is payable so 3500 rupees will be allowed clear ha uh, sir it is 50 percentage of 50 percentage sir 50% of the assessed amount sir Fifty percent of the assessed amount. If it is a metal. Ah, sir. In that again, fifty percentage we need to uh, do, sir. Kindly check the IMT twenty three, sir. Sir, that's what I'm. I'm ah. using fifty percent, right? Out of eight thousand rupees, seven thousand is the allowed after allowing twelve point five percent depreciation. So seven thousand will not be allowed. Only fifty percent of that will be allowed. So three thousand five hundred ah. will be allowed. sir okay. uh, for paint material na paint amount whatever is given into 78 that is the shortest way to yeah, calculate yeah 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 i was about to tell you that ma'am last year only i have informed that uh see whenever uh, you are solving any numerical i was about to tell that ma'am uh in my last year class uh, also i have told that thing see the shortest way of solving this 87.5% 12.5% is very confusing the easiest way to solve a numerical whenever a painting charges come okay is multiply it by 7 by 8 if it is 8000 i do not have to calculate the 7.5 it is uh, just now you asked me i why, why did i tell 7000 rupees because whenever paint work comes just multiply it by 7 by 8 you will get your answer what should be allowed so 8000 into 7 by 8 is 7000 rupees 7000 50% will only be allowed 50% of the assessed amount what is the assessed amount 7000 rupees 50% of that will be payable if you have opted for IMT 23 so 3500 will be allowed is it clear sir sir in all this uh, we have to do 7 by 8 in paint material yes ma'am not material i am um, paint work paint work yes paint work just do 7 by 8 paint work includes material and labor yes exactly so if it is 5000 also then we do 7 by 8 5% means If paint work is five thousand rupees, then also we do seven yes. by eight. You do, ma'am. That is same. Eighty-seven point five percent of the total amount. That is how we are calculating, right? You multiply okay. it by seven by eight. 
that is also 12.5% 87.5% only that is a shorter oh. way of doing it that is what i am telling okay okay 7 by 8 and trust me ma'am uh, in 90% of the numericals which will come in the exam hmm. it will be directly in the proportion of 7 by 8 okay so it will be like 40000 rupees so 7 by 8 8 fives are 40 so it will be 35000 rupees examiner also knows this thing so the concept of numerical solving has come from there only in case it is not coming it is fine you calculate it is 7.5 but that is a shortcut i am telling you and in 90 95% of the cases you will be able to arrive at that amount in a shorter way by multiplying it by 7 by 8 okay so does this paint work uh, include materials also 8000 ma'am ma it includes everything and in exam it will not be bifurcated please understand the i i made you understand the concept so that you do not get confused where the 15 50% appreciation of a painting material was given yeah. i do not wanted to confuse your you, all of you that's why i told in exam it will be mentioned paint work paint work paint work and it will include everything everything means the material and the labor charges both please do not confuse yourself okay i made you understand this concept because in future whenever you will read the tariff or future you will read the book it will be mentioned painting material 50% depreciation then you will think he uh, definitely the sir have told us uh, wrong way because it is 50% depreciation that is 50% depreciation for only for material charges in numericals it will be given in the form of paint work only which will include both the material and the labor charges clear yes sir great okay these are the uh, i have solved the numericals for you so that you have an idea of it uh these are very easy uh what is the answer for question number 5 just just for a quick brush up valid for 3 months what is the concept of b. death of insured option b wrong ma'am in case of death of insured the policy has to be transferred within 3 months or 90 days months. or expiry of policy it's not 3 months it's 90 days yes valid for 90 days and expiry of policy whichever is earlier whichever is earlier yes so the best possible answer is see one more thing i will tell you in many questions sometimes uh, we have to solve or we have to answer the most most nearest possible answer see many times we come out of the exam center saying that oh that the question was wrong question was wrong question was wrong we have to answer the most nearest correct answer if accurate answer is not given if it is 90 days it is given valid for 3 months what as a as a best option answer what will be the answer for this it will be option d okay valid for 3 months or expiry of policy whichever is earlier okay what is the answer for question number 6 What is the answer for question number six? D. D for Delhi. Yes, because IDV is always calculated on manufacturer's listed selling price less twenty percent. What is the depreciation for one to two years? Twenty percent. Question number seven, you will understand. Automobile discount is uh, only allowed for private car and two wheelers. So answer will be C. Okay. What is the answer for question number eight? We have discussed this concept. Answer is C. Sorry. Answer is C. C. Yes. Um, uh, please read the question again properly. Sir, answer is B. Okay. Any other answer? Your answer is B. Correct answer is B. See, this is not a mechanical damage. 
This is not a mechanical damage. This is an accidental damage. In accidental damage, everything is payable. Why did the tie rod break? Tie rod break because of some stone lying on the road. So, what is the nearest? What is how? What is the cause of accident? Accident external means which is covered under motor policy. This is not due to lack of maintenance that this right rod tie rod break that you are uh, without uh, reading the question properly you are answering that okay this is not payable this is payable. Wherever the proximate cause is accident external means everything is payable so correct answer will be B. Okay. Okay. Uh, enough of questions. Let's move ahead. Okay. Uh, I'll explain these very fast. Automobile association discount. It can be allowed for two wheeler and private car. It is 5% of OD subject to minimum maximum of 200 rupees for private car and 50 rupees for two wheeler. Vintage cars I've already told. Anti theft device 2.5% of OD subject to maximum of 500 rupees. It is not applicable for motor trade policies. Laid up vehicle. Laid up vehicle is important. Any vehicle which is laid up or not in use for more than two months. The concept of laid up arises. What happens in case of laid up vehicles? No cash discount is given. The policy, the discount is either adjusted on renewal or the policy is extended in this case. What are the charges? 15 rupees are collected for laid up vehicles or extension of laid up vehicles at administrative expenses. Okay. Uh, okay. GR 33 is important. What is the discount applicable for blind, handicapped and mentally challenged people? 50% discount on OD is allowed. Try, try issuing, issuing a policy of mentally challenged people. You will understand that. For example, I'm, I'm just telling you, just for your information. For example, 1 lakh is the premium. You are giving 50% discount. So the premium will be 50,000 rupees, right? In case you select this option as yes in our New India site also, that premium will further reduce from 50,000 50, to 25,000. Okay. So whatever is the final premium after discount, this 50% discount of OD is again applied and the premium is further reduced. This is just for your information I'm telling you. Because some people think, you know what some people think? Some people think that already we are giving 80% discount. What is the use of giving 50% discount? No, that is not the way. Whatever the premium which is coming after allowing the 80% discount, it is further reduced by 50% in case the policy is issued for blind, handicapped and mentally challenged people. Is it clear? Clear? Yes, sir. Okay. This is important. GR 35 is important. When sir, GR 32 is what you GR 32. Yes, sir. Hmm. I'll tell you. Prohibition of midterm inclusion, cancellation of extra benefit. You cannot include any extra benefits in your policy except once during currency of the policy. Our tariff, if you'll go to tariff also, this one line is given. Midterm inclusion or midterm addition of extra benefit cannot be allowed, is not permitted more than once during the currency of the policy. Sir, Clear? any example of extra benefit? Extra benefit, sir. Yes. Uh, sir CNG, CNG kit is inserted. Then, sir, no, ma'am. That is not an extra benefit. No, ma'am. <laughs> insertion of CNG, insertion of CNG is altogether a different concept. Extra benefit means, sir, for example, uh, you are, you have, you want to add accessories, accessories. So there are some accessories of your vehicle, which you have not added during the issuance of policy. Okay. For example, in eco sport car, there used to be, a, a the, there is a, there is a wheel at the back of that car, right? In initial level, the company used to give the cover for that wheel also along with the vehicle. But in the last four or five years, they have not given that cover that is you have to insure it separately as an accessory. So if you want to add that, you can do that only for once during the policy of the year. That is one of the examples. I think that is not benefit. That is an accessory. Accessory is not a benefit. Okay. I want Similar. to know about what is the benefit. For example, PA policy. That can, be, that can be another example. For PA, personal accident. You want to add PA benefit. That is an extra benefit. You have not added it during the policy. Now you want to add it. That can be another example. That is also an extra benefit, right? Okay. Okay, sir. Okay. Yes. GR 35 is important. Okay. Use of vehicle within insured premises or site. So there are two concepts in this. 
the vehicle is used within own premises own premises this is my premise i am using my vehicle only within this own premises or this concept of own premises is applicable to all the classes of vehicle okay 33.3% discounted additional given if the vehicle is confined to own premises and second concept is confined to a particular site what do you mean by particular site where there is no general access of public so this concept comes only for goods carrying vehicle in that case also 33.3% discount extra is given for vehicles which are used within a insured own premises or confined within a particular site okay pa to owner driver the concept many times the concept comes from this pa to owner driver see uh, everyone knows i know everyone is aware ki the pa to owner driver sum insured has been revised to 15 lakhs okay but there are one or two uh, concepts which everyone might not be clear about which i'll explain it to you first the concept of pa to owner driver arises when the person having a vehicle has a owner valid driving license in his name then this con this pa to owner driver of some in short 15 lakhs which has been revised to 3 years back is being allowed first the pa to owner driver compensation is also given see i am not reading this one by one i'll tell you where you can get stuck the pa to owner driver uh, compensation is also allowed when you are driving the vehicle or you are traveling as a passenger in your own vehicle or you are coming out of the vehicle or you are entering into the vehicle in all these circumstances pa to owner driver is payable please understand this thing many people think that he is driving the vehicle then only pa to owner driver is payable no pa to owner driver or compensation of 15 lakhs is payable he is driving he is sitting as a co passenger he is sitting as a co passenger he is mounting into the vehicle he is coming out of the vehicle in all these concept pa to owner driver 15 lakh rupees is payable first thing second thing for example a person has five vehicles okay and he has taken pa to owner driver on three vehicles and he has not taken pa to owner driver add on in two policies now what will happen what will happen in case he died while in accident with that vehicle in which he has not taken pa to owner driver what will happen is 15 lakhs payable or not no not no payable not payable not payable why because payable payable okay another answer not payable is uh, he has taken a pa owner driver car for that particular vehicle not as an individual policy i think but someone is telling that it is payable okay yes it's payable so that means there is some confusion okay now understand this thing as per reason see uh there is a concept of when this uh, pa to owner driver concept came this issue was taken to irdf that why do we have to take pa to owner driver for each and every vehicle i am having 10 vehicles why should i take pa to owner driver the compensation is fixed 15 lakh rupees why should i take or why should i pay premium for 10 policies and include pa to owner driver in each every policy because when accident will happen i will not know it will happen through only any one vehicle only so the concept which was told to insurance companies was that you issue a separate policy which is known as cpa policy which is known as cpa policy in that you can enter all the vehicles you can enter all the vehicles which are in your name and issue a separate policy instead of entering into each and every policy and collecting for example 275 rupees in 10 vehicles you can issue a single cpa policy which is a separate policy in itself and the compensation for 15 lakhs will be allowed the name of all the vehicles registered in your name will be entered and instead of for example 275 rupees 375 rupees is payable then you any accident in those vehicles will be covered and you will be paid the compensation but in case you are not issued a cpa policy in case you have not taken a cpa policy and instead you are taking pa policy vehicle wise then if you are hit by a vehicle in which you have not taken a pa policy no claim will be payable is it clear is it clear if you have issued a separate cpa yes. policy 
then everything is payable because you will be while issuing that policy you will enter all the vehicles so obviously automatically whenever you will be hit uh, you will be pay, paid 15 lakh rupees but if a separate cpa policy is not issued and if you are hit by a vehicle in which you have not taken a pa policy and or in case you do not have a separate cpa policy no claim will be payable to you is it clear this is the only concept this is the only concept where uh, people get confused so i wanted to clarify this doubt to all of you is it clear doubt yes sir if the person is not having dl then it is not payable uh, no uh, but he but he is having a driver and he always will be traveling uh, uh, at the back seat or side seat sir pa to owner driver is issued or the concept of pa to owner driver comes only and only when the owner has a valid driving license he can issue a separate pa policy for himself effective but, driver but, uh, 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 for the same class of vehicle yes exactly effective effective but if he has driver. taken uh, excuse me if he has taken premium for the uh, like uh, uh, occupiers number of like five people four people 50 rupees that per is, person that is, takes, that it, is, it will be payable that is a different thing ma'am that is a optional pa cover yeah that is optional pa cover in, in which you can take the premium for 2 lakh rupees then it is covered then it is covered yes. you can take a unnamed pa policy but that is not okay. mandatory right this is mandatory. that is not mandatory yes, uh, yes. thank you i am talking about this 15 lakh rupees you can he can take a separate then he can take a separate pa policy which is not related to the vehicle then obviously it will it is pa is a benefit policy will be covered i am only okay. and only talking about the compulsory pa to owner driver policy which is covered under gr 36a okay okay okay, okay. So okay sir thank vehicle, you sir any vehicle any person having a valid owner driving valid driving license for that class of vehicle obviously if he is driving a private car he does not need to have a two wheeler license if he is having a two wheeler license again it is not paid he has to have a valid driving license for that particular class of vehicle then it is payable it is payable when he is driving or he is sitting as a co passenger or he is getting into or mounting onto that vessel that is the important concept which all of you should be known uh, you should be aware about because that concept might be asked in the exam okay sir only and death cover is given ma'am i'll i'm just coming to that just wait for one second okay and so many people have this doubt ki only death is payable see ma'am 15 lakh is payable for death loss of two limbs loss of both the eyes one limb or one eye 7.5 lakhs will be payable if is a loss to one limb or sight of one eye and if there is any permanent total disablement 100% 15 lakhs will be payable okay so i think i have answered your question here okay ma'am yes sir thank you okay this concept is clear now is optional pa to owner driver optional pa to owner driver can be given that is 1 lakh rupees for two wheeler and 2 lakh rupees for private car and commercial vehicles how much premium is collected for for example for two wheeler 7 rupees per 10000 so 70 rupees will be collected because 1 lakh is the maximum cover of optional pa that can be allowed for two wheeler so 70 rupees will be collected additional if you want to cover an unnamed pa for private car for 2 lakh rupees premium will be 5 rupees per 10000 so total premium will be 100 rupees for covering one passenger of 2 lakh rupees what is the normal uh, way we cover up to the sitting capacity for example five sitting capacity is there if you want to cover five persons for unnamed pa so that will be like 100 into 5 so 500 rupees extra will be charged for that and 6 rupees in case of commercial vehicles 60 rupees for 1 lakh rupees so for 2 lakh rupees it will be 120 rupees but this is not a mandatory cover this is an optional pa cover sometimes questions are asked what is the optional pa cover maximum limit for two wheeler many people answer 2 lakhs no it is 1 lakh for two wheeler and 2 lakh rupees for private car and commercial vehicle clear cover for vehicles imported without customs duty many times vehicles are imported without paying the custom duty we load this premium by 30% vehicle reparation by yes ma'am uh, sir actually uh, uh, gr 36 ke regarding uh, if uh, i am having my two wheeler uh, with the cpa cover and i too have a uh, personal accident coverage okay. and met with an accident and died in that accident yes ma'am uh, should my hair will uh, claim in both the policies or yes, uh, with yes, vehicle only no ma'am it will be payable in both the policies see pa is a benefit policy ma'am 
PA is also a separate PA policy. If you are taking, it is also a worldwide policy. PA mm -hmm. is separate is a worldwide policy and it is a benefit policy. Okay. Uh, uh, if you will go through a separate PA policy, now the first concept is that only that it is a benefit policy. It is just like an LIC. We are having ten ten LIC policies. All of them will be triggered. All of payment for all of them will be payable. Similar is with PA policy because it is a benefit policy. You will be able to claim both under CPA policy as well as your separate PA policy in case you have. Okay, thank you. Uh, GR thirty seven loading by thirty percent vehicle requisition by government. What it is this? For example, there is an election recently. There was an election in Rajasthan. I was also there in for that duty. So what happened? The government has requisitioned or or uh, taken over. For example, five hundred vehicles, commercial vehicles, from X Y Z persons. So those vehicles are now in custody of the government. So any loss to those vehicles will be first paid by government, and any excess of that will be payable by the insurance company. That is a classic example of G R thirty eight. Okay. Third party property damage. Our policy, our motor policy, or our uh, motor policy covers third party for both the injury. For which the there is unlimited liability and third party loss for property damage, in which the compensation is fixed at one lakh rupees for two wheeler and seven point five lakh for other type of vehicle. Now, this third party property damage concept is not available for motor trade policies, internal risk policies. Okay, and in case you reduce this seven point five lakhs or one lakh compensation limit to the statutory limit of six thousand rupees. Then a discount can be allowed on your motor policy, and how much discount? Not discount actually. It is like reduction of the statutory cover. So, two hundred rupees TP premium will be reduced in case it is three wheeler or taxi. One fifty rupees will be reduced for commercial vehicles, three wheeler and taxi. Okay. Other than three wheeler and taxi, two hundred rupees. For example, if you are reducing a truck. And in case you are in case you are issuing a goods carrying vehicle policy, and you are reducing the statutory limit. Uh, from seven point five lakhs to six thousand rupees, two hundred will be reduced in your premium. One fifty rupees for taxis, hundred rupees for private car, and fifty rupees for two wheeler. Okay, and in case of mid term, in case of mid term change of CPPD is not allowed. Clear? Sir, this amount will be reduced from OD premium. No, ma'am. CP premium. Sir, it is optional. Ma'am, uh, it is optional. Many many times we do not exercise this, obviously because it is a very meager amount. But I have seen policies in which CPPD is reduced. I have seen policies. Okay. Nobody do nobody does it in uh, real life, but I have seen this. It has happened. Okay. So where is it given out in the GR or in the IMT that uh, personal accident covering the for the premium rider is one lakh maximum. Yeah. Where it is given, I am telling you, ma'am. Why will I? Why will I share the uh, incorrect knowledge? Well, I I am not doubting you, but I still uh, I am looking in the IMT, uh, in the GR or in the IMT. I am not able to find it. You will find oh, it. Okay, maybe somewhere. after the lecture you can tell. Yeah. Okay, it, sir. It, it is. It is, there, it is there, ma'am. It is there. It is there, ma'am. It is there. One lakh rupees for P two hundred driver. It is there, ma'am. Hundred percent. Where exactly? I am not able to recall where it is mentioned, but it is there, ma'am. One lakh rupees for two wheeler. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. You, thank if you. If, and if you want to do an R and D, uh, whenever you go to office tomorrow, yes, sir. Uh, just take a two wheeler policy, okay? And there is an option of PA to unlimited. Okay, okay, just try doing it two lakh rupees. It yes, will give sir. you an error, ma'am. It will give you an error that PA to unlimited for two wheeler can be maximum one lakh rupees only. I am thousand percent sure. That I will try now. That I will try now only, sir. Yes, During the lecture, I'll do. Right, I'm 100% sure. sure. You will remember that. Uh, exact the error will be thrown is that only. Either maximum PA to unnamed can be allowed for a two wheeler is one lakh rupees only. Okay, so you'll have a practical experience of that as well. It is there, ma'am. One lakh only. Okay. Okay. This is the GR40 compulsory deductible. You have to mug up this. There is no shortcut of it. In case you want to solve any numericals, you have to mug up this compulsory deductible. Okay, for goods carrying vehicles, seven thousand five hundred to sixteen thousand five hundred. 
uh, less than 7500 500 1000 rupees for 7500 to 16500 more than 16500 1500 rupees for vehicle under d category 0.5 subject to minimum of 2000 rupees for efg 50 rupees for two wheeler 500 for others for taxis more uh, less than 1500 cc 500 more than 1500 cc 1000 rupees for private car 1000 and 2000 for two wheeler 100 rupees this is the compulsory deductible you have to mug up this because uh, it will not be given in the question and you will be asked to solve the numerical by yourself okay okay electrical fittings if there is any separate electrical fitting premium will be four percent of that cng lpg cng lpg there are two concepts for example there can be two things you might fit a cng from outside or you might have a vehicle in which inbuilt cng is there okay whenever you are fitting a cng from any outside agency four percent of that cng kit value will be charged for cng plus 60 rupees on the tp side everyone knows that in case it is a company fitted cng whatever the od premium will come five percent of that od premium after the discount whatever is the final od premium five percent of that will be extra charge or five percent for example is thousand rupees okay so five percent of thousand rupees is 50 rupees 50 rupees extra will be charged in case it is an inbuilt cng okay so this is the concept of cng four percent in case it is separately fitted and five percent of the od premium in case it is company fitted cng vehicles and 60 rupees additional will be charged on the tp side okay Sir, why additional premium is charged, sir, on CNG and LPG? Sorry, ma'am. Why additional 5% or 4% premium is charged? Ma'am, because what is CNG, the logic behind that? Ma'am, CNG itself, there are two reasons, ma'am. 60 rupees on TP side is charged because the TP liability increases because CNG might lead to various accidents, right? In case of accidents. So, TP okay. liability might increase. Secondly, TP, the CNG kit or the kit system itself has a value in itself, right? So, in case there is any loss to that, obviously, if you want to pay that, uh, we have to charge some premium for that, right? Okay. So nowadays, if you will fit your CNG uh, for outside also, it is taking 50,000, 60,000 rupees. You want to reverse 50,000 rupees without charging anything or without collecting the premium for that, how we can do that? We have to charge certain premium. And what is the premium? 4% of that uh, kit value, CNG kit value. Okay. Okay. GR43 fiberglass for fiberglass fuel tanks fitted 100 rupees extra is charged for OD class. This is all for remembering is hardly comes in practical life for class D vehicles. It is 100 rupees for all other. It is 50 rupees. Yes. Vehicle used for driving tuitions. So for tuition driving, the two wheeler can also be used. Three wheeler can also be used. Private car can also be used. All this can be used for tuition driving. So in case it is a private car or goods carrying vehicle or passenger carrying vehicle which is used for driving tuitions the 60 percent loading will be done on the od premium 60 percent loading will be done on the od premium but if it is a two wheeler or three wheeler 60 percent loading will be done both on od and tp portion remember this difference please remember this difference 60 percent will be charged on od in case for private car goods carrying and passenger carrying vehicles for two wheeler and three wheeler 50 60 percent loading will be done on both od and tp portion okay gr 45a it is very important many times question comes from this side uh i have told in the starting also there is a restricted cover restricted cover under motor policy for which a separate policy is allowed under motor tariff so there are two types of 45 gr 45a and 45b in case of 45a liability is not covered so Either fire it is covered or theft portion is covered or fire plus theft is covered. Accordingly, the premium is charged. If it is a single peril of fire, rate will be less. If it is the combined peril of fire and theft, rate will be higher. So if it is a fire policy or theft policy, 0.50% of ID will be charged. If it is a fire plus theft policy, it will be 0.75% of ID. When this restricted cover can be given, this restricted cover can be allowed only when the vehicle is in garage and not is used. Again. The vehicle in garage should not be for the purpose of repair of the vehicle. You should not repair your vehicle after an accident and then uh, apply for this restricted cover. This vehicle should be free from any damage. Okay. 
then only this cover can be allowed. So this restricted cover for fire and theft risk, fire and theft risk under GR 45A, it is prohibited, it is not allowed for class D, E, F, G. Remember this difference, remember this difference, many times question comes, restricted cover for fire or theft policy is prohibited for D, E, F, G policies. What is the difference? I'll tell you. And in case of 45B, where liability portion is added, so it is liability plus fire or liability plus theft or liability plus fire plus theft. In that case, it is prohibited only and only for class D people. That is the difference. GR 45A is prohibited for DEFG. GR 45B is prohibited for class D vehicles. That is the difference which might be asked in exam. Okay. This is all not important. Okay. Uh, what is the answer for question number nine? Sir, one question. Yes, please. Kya aisa bhi aa sakta hai ki this GR belongs to this? Aisa kuch aa sakta hai? Sir, kuch bhi aa sakta hai. C. Uh, GR number yaad kar lo. Nine C. Sir, why should I say why should I say that it cannot be asked? C. Sir, there. See, what is the trend? I'll tell you. Before five to seven years, directly GRs were asked. Then the trend changed. They stopped asking GR. The application of GR was asked. Okay. From last year, directly they are asking IMT, this IMT number. Last year, there were direct IMT questions. Even I okay. used to tell, last year in my class, I told so many people that no need to uh, go through IMTs, no need to go through IMTs. I myself have never been read an IMT. I am a motor faculty from probably last six, seven years. I myself have never read IMT. Only remembers a few of them. But in last year question, directly they are asking IMT. So anything can be asked. There is no restriction to what an examiner can ask you, right? But there is no trend. Every time it keeps on changing. It might be asked. I cannot say that it will not be asked. Okay. Additionally, this is everything. Okay. Uh, I want to ask question number 10. <clears throat> Ninth ka everyone knows. It is additional premium of 30%. Is it B? Let, let me read the question, sir. I have also not said. <laughs> sir, B. When was the policy issued? Policy issued from 1st July 2009. Okay. What is the cover? 30th June 2010. The vehicle met with an accident of 5th of April. When did the insurer die? 31st of December. So 90 days. 90 days. When will the 90 days will get over? 30th March. 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 So he should have transferred his vehicle by then. Right? He should have transferred his vehicle by then, right? Yes or no? Yes, what sir. Is the concept? What is the concept in, in case? No, of sir. Time? Policy period, na? No, no, no. Within three months, he has to. Within three months or expiry of policy, whichever is earlier. Whichever is earlier. Which is coming before? When is the policy expiring? 30th June 2010. So there is a long time. When are the 90 days getting over? Probably on 30th of March, right? Has he transferred his vehicle by then? Yes or no? No. 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 So what will you do? You'll pay the claim? No. No. Claim is not payable. But uh, you are all, all are answering option B. Why, why is that? Why is that confusion? Why is that confusion? You will not be able to pay the claim because the policy is not transferred within 90 days or expiry of policy, whichever is earlier. Okay. Clear? Claim will not be payable. 
because he has to get his vehicle transferred either on renewal or 90 days whichever is coming earlier right he has not done both the things so claim will not be payable okay question number 11 I have not explained this concept, still I am asking in case you have gone through this. D sir. D for Delhi? Yes D sir. For D. Yes. Because Mr. C, 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 mobile drill. C, excavator can be overturned. No? Sir, what is the question? Which of the following types of vehicles do not carry overturning risk under standard cover? The overturning as a two uh, overturning as a risk is covered in almost all types of vehicles, right? Except a few of them, which will be mentioned under class D. Under class D, a C. few vehicles. Dumper. The answer is C. C, 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 sir. C. B B C sir. It's B dumper. Answer the answer. Please, the answer is option D, both A and C. Okay. Both excavator and mobile drilling rigs have to be paid separate premium has to be paid for covering the overturning in this go through go ahead go through uh, the miscellaneous type of vehicle you will get the answer the answer for question number 11 will be both a and c excavator and mobile drilling risk both of them overturning risk is not inbuilt cover and it has to be insured separately by paying additional premium option number 12 uh, sir, it means, uh, but there, uh, there are chances of uh, overturning na, for excavator. Yes, ma'am. There are chances. That's why we are paying separate premium, ma'am. Additional premium. Ma this additional premium we have to charge. Yes, ma'am. Because excavator and mobile drilling rigs are mostly used in such circumstances. And mostly the damage in these vehicles comes by overturning. That but sir, question is asked, do not carry overturning risk. Under standard cover. Under standard cover, please read the questions properly. So what does that mean? Overturning is not covered automatically. So you have to cover them separately. In which type of vehicles it has to be covered separately? Excavator and mobile drilling rigs. Okay, please read the question properly. Do not carry overturning risk under standard cover. That means it has to be covered separately. So excavator and mobile drilling rigs Overturning risk has to be covered separately by paying additional premium. Clear? Clear, ma'am? And sir, what about dump dumper? Ma'am, dumper, uh, overturning is uh, inbuilt cover. It is automatically covered in dumpers. You have to remember those five, six uh, vehicles. Uh, for which I'll explain it to you. I'll give it to you. I'll give you the list also. Just wait for few minutes. Okay. What is the answer for option number 12? A is the answer. 12? A. A. Is A. 15 lakhs. A. This concept I've explained to you. Okay. If I would have not explained this concept, again, there would have been a confusion whether to pay or not. Okay. But now this concept is clear, I think, to all of you. So, whatever the answer may be given in different types of materials you are reading x y z please do not uh, i what again what i can say please do not uh, understand the concept and apply your logic accordingly just do not uh, believe in whatever is given under various materials available in the market this concept is clear okay okay uh, you can go through these questions uh, later on just I want to know the answer for question number 19. That's it. All those you can do it later. What is the answer for question number 19? B. B sir. C. No sir. B. It's B. 
Sir, again answer is D. Rule of subrogation. Diff again, different answers are coming. What is the confusion? Sir, D. D. Why D? Hmm? Why D? Sir, the rule of sub uh, subrogation uh, evolves. Uh, Two point five. Uh, like I am, I am asking for question number nineteen, one nine, last question. <coughs> I am asking the answer to question number 19. Sir, next question is, clear cut guidelines, but option is C, 10% less than 22.5 lakh. Sir, you have no option. This is the question. You have to answer the nearest answer is C. Nearest answer is C. Yes. What did I tell you? You have to answer the nearest question, right? Nearest answer is C. What should be the IDV up to 5 years? What should be the idea? 2.5 lakhs. 50 percent. Right? No. So option one is ruled out. Two lakhs is ruled okay. out. Hmm. Two uh, it is not ruled out. 2.5 lakhs is ruled out. Okay. Option number B is ruled out. Option number D is ruled out. So what is the nearest answer? 10 percent less than 2.5 lakhs. That is the nearest possible answer, right? Choose the best available option. What is the best uh, available sir. option? Sir, uh, it is more than five year old vehicle, so depreciation should be charged fifty percent only, na? No, sir. Yes, sir. Tariff says so. What does no, no. There is a mutual consent. Sir, what, what, what does tariff say? Tariff say that fifty percent should be reduced up to five years. What about six years? So from six well, he, it from... says that after five years, uh, it should be between the insured and the insurer exactly. mutual understanding. So, but ten oh, percent yes. is reduced nowhere. Ma'am, what, ma'am, what is the general trend? You will increase the IDV after five years. That means, or you will keep no, the no, no. same. But sir, two point five is enough, na? We answer theoretical, no, no, not practical. It's like unsaid rule, ten percent, wala, but no, nowhere written. Ma'am, that's what I'm saying. Try to understand. See, listen. See, first five years, the IDV is fixed, right? First, the depreciation schedule for first five years is fixed. So we understand that after five years, the IDV will be two point five lakh. Everyone agree to this. After five years, it is mutually agreed between insurer and the insurance company. So normally, it is ten percent reduction because since Three, two to three years, three to four years, four to five years, it is reducing by 10%. We might decide, we might decide not to reduce it by 10%. For, for example, we might decide to reduce by 5% or by 10% or continue the trend. So, or by 2.5 also, no? whatever, sir, whatever you may decide to do it. So, but you cannot keep the IDV same, right? So, in general trend, what is the closest answer? Can answer be 2.5 lakh? No, right? The closest answer will be. Only TP policy is also not the answer. So what is the closest answer? 10%. This is one of the options. If the answer would have been 5% less than 2%, that would have been the answer. So it is not a hard and fast rule. So up to five years, IDV schedule is given. After five years, it is mutually agreed. Mutually agreed means the depreciation might be 10% or it may be less or it may be more also, depending on the condition of the vehicle. So we have to choose the closest answer. If this is the question will come, what will we choose? You can ignore, you can ignore to answer that question, but if you have no option, what is the closest answer? Closest answer will be 10% less than 2.5 lakh. That is what I'm telling. Perfect. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Uh, now we will, uh, we have understood the major GR. Let us move ahead with private cars. Sir, this sir, answers of previous questions from 13 to... Ma'am, ma it is there. It is there in my slide at the end. Okay. Okay. You will get all the answers. You will get all the slides. Do not worry. I'll I've marked the answers. I've calculated the numericals for you. Everything I've done. Don't worry. Okay. So section two is private car. What is the private car? Only important thing under this uh, different different sections is how is the premium depend? Premium depends on three factors: <coughs> age of the vehicle. Can you please mute your mic? Sir, uh, can I interrupt you? Yes, please tell me. Sir, I recently joined the meeting. I was traveling. I just reached to office and I was watching your video on YouTube. Sir, I missed that part. Uh, when you were discussing about the depreciation part, there uh, are the slabs from uh, six months to uh, one year and not more than one year, not mo one year to not more than two years. Can you explain this concept? Because I got a bit confusion. Uh, one of the uh, example when I was solving that problem, I, my answer was getting wrong because of that confusion. See, the vehicle uh, was registered from 1st January 2020 and the policy is going to be expired on 31st uh, December of 2020. Then uh, 
how will the depreciation will be applicable after crossing the one day what is the age what is the age of the vehicle at the time of accident that is most important sir if the age of the vehicle okay. is between 6 to 12 months then accordingly the depreciation will apply for example metallic yes. part for the metallic part if the not no, uh, disturbing you uh, not about metallic but just fixation of the idv i have the bit confusion on that how to fix the idv sir idv is always fixed on first on the current ex showroom price right yes example, yes certainly current ex showroom price is 100 rupees okay yes so for the first idv it is always 5% less than the current ex yes okay so, yes in the tariff it is mentioned 6 to 12 months 15% less that is yes. only used in practical because yeah. why i'll tell you why because first policy will be issued 5% less not yeah. less than 6 month schedule so it will be 95 rupees right when yeah. you will go for your first renewal by that time you will be crossing the age of 1 year right so you will automatically Obviously. fall into the slab of 20% so 20% after after 1 year or you can say the first renewal your idv should be current ex showroom price minus 20% right minus 20 percent and uh, how will apply the 15 percent uh, depreciation in that circumstances sir it is hardly applied that is hardly I mean. applied it, it is in practical life because normally we renew the policy on the same terms and condition but there might yes. be circumstances for example uh, sometimes what happens is ki you buy a vehicle okay uh, but you do for example nowadays insurance is mandatory but previously what used to do is ki we used to buy a vehicle from pondicherry example there are less taxes there you used to register it in Chennai and while registering in Chennai that there would have been some time gap. So what will be the IDV if you if it would have been more than six months at that time Obvious. you cannot reduce IDV by 5% at that time you have to reduce it by 15%. Okay. Okay. It is applied reason being nowadays policies are issued at the time of selling of the vehicle only. Uh, that that I what I construed from your assertion that is if uh, one day is also crossed from the date of expiration of the policy now another slab will be automatically again attracted is it yes. so yes sir yes sir definitely yes if your policy is from first January to thirty first December if it is yes asked, what will be the IDV on first of the next year it will be reduced by twenty percent sir it goes and suppose he and suppose he is himself re, re, uh, uh, renewing on the same 31st day, then what will be the ID that on the 31st matter. December? That does not matter, sir, when he is renewing the IDV. No, no. Uh, uh, if suppose the poli policy is renewing on the 31st December itself. Uh -huh. Sir, is yes. effective date to 1st January, right? Effective, effective date, date of count. Is, no? Sir, when you are paying the premium is not immaterial here, right? Effective date. Yeah. What is the age of the vehicle when the policy is renewed? It goes according to age of the vehicle, sir. What will be the age yeah. of the and vehicle? And effective date. And effective date. It, it, it would have been crossed one year. So, obviously, you will fall in the 20% slab. Sir, yeah. I will tell you one more, thing. one more question can come. See, question can come like, for example, in 2021, this date, particular the idv is 10 lakh rupees okay what will be the idv as on this date question might come date wise also and date the date might extend one or two days also so if it is extending for example three to four years it should be 30 percent so 10 lakh minus uh, 30 percent is 7 lakh rupees the answer will be 7 lakh rupees you cannot say that ki it is just one day or one day behind or one day back that is immaterial questions can come like this also see the idv of the vehicle or the ex showroom price of the vehicle would was 9 lakh 50 thousand rupees he might not tell you idv also he what he will tell you he will tell you the ex showroom price yeah. so you should know see the first ex showroom price is 5% less of that idv so if you is telling that the first ex showroom price is 9 lakh 50 thousand you have to calculate recalculate itself that means if the first idv is 9 lakh 50 thousand rupees so the ex showroom price should be 10 lakh rupees right from that the depreciation should apply from 10 lakh rupees and not from 9 lakh 50 thousand rupees that also you should remember it is it is not uh, 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 important that he will give you always the showroom price he might give you the first year idv also so you should know that first year idv is 95 percent of that so you have to recalculate the showroom price and then accordingly apply the depreciation you understand my concept certainly i got your point sir okay great uh, one one more question please one more yes if the side mirror of a car is broken down by got by accident then how uh, the part will be calculated as plastic part or glass part plastic part 
plastic part but uh, glass part is there also there the yeah. how the classification yeah, is there it is there but it is calculated as per plastic part only because plastic part, part okay majorly majorly the assembly to attach it that is the major costly part the glass is uh, of, of very less value as comparison to other assembly which is fitted with that so it is considered under plastic part okay i think it is thank possible. you sir thank you yes sir certainly clear anyone has any other doubt you can ask okay great uh, so in private car the premium depends these are very simple things all of you must be knowing so i'll go a little fast here okay premium depends on age of the vehicle zone yes somebody wants to ask something yeah uh, sir what is the uh, airbag is damaged under depreciation 50% in under nail lip policy i have already told i have already told this thing for airbag so it is not 50% irrespective of whether they are having nail depreciation or package policy right does not matter sir we are talking only about the normal policies here that means package policy any modification will not be asked in the exam reason being every company has different types of policies regarding that what is general across okay. or common across everything that will be asked okay thank you okay so uh, in case of private car premium depends on age of the vehicle zone of the vehicle and cubic capacity of the vehicle so what is the towing charges towing charges 1500 rupees for private car 2500 for commercial vehicle which i have already told for two wheelers it is 300 rupees for three wheelers it is 750 rupees just remember this thing okay this is not important yes question sometimes comes from this part also ki what is the minimum value right for in case of two wheelers in case of uh, private car for in case of private car when the cc is below 1000 cc minimum value is 15000 rupees many many types many many times question have come from this ki this is the cc of the vehicle what can be the minimum value insured to cover that od portion what is the minimum value of that vehicle what is what can be the minimum value so it is according to the cc for 1000 cc it is 15000 rupees for 1000 to 1500 cc 20000 rupees exceeding 1500 cc 30000 rupees this is the minimum value for which you can cover and or you can issue an od policy in case of different types of cc of the vehicle remember this thing i have also sir, seen sir minimum value is some insured no yes ma'am okay yes, sir ma and i have seen questions c any excuse me sir yes ma'am sir what is the minimum value in uh, liability policy ma'am there is no minimum value in liability policy rb covering but... od portion are we covering od portion in liability policy we are covering only the third party liabilities right sir what doubt yes sir this minimum value uh, that is for the next renewal this need not be reduced sir yeah it might not be reduced after 5 years anything can be decided it is up to the insurance company and insurer uh, no 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 sir my question is this vehicle is crossed 20 years hmm say it's crossed 20 years and we have fixed 20000 rupees okay and it comes for 21st year renewal okay whether the 20000 needs to be reduced or the minimum value has to be maintained for further renewals the, the moment you reduce it below 20000 you cannot issue an od policy you have to shift to the liability policy okay okay sir okay. thank you sir okay. uh, this is the minimum value you can keep if you want to go below this you cannot issue an comprehensive policy or package policy you have to go liability policy. liability only policy only for that yes, yes. questions thank have you. been uh, coming from this part so uh, what is the minimum period for application of the minimum uh, uh, minimum value of the uh, vehicle there is no there is no time limit there is no time limit is uh, even within 5 years of the policy we can also charge uh, as a 15000 rupees as a minimum value policy you can do anything sir but why will i insured agree to think about that? no no i'm just can you ask ha ha there is no there is no uh, limit to any time period but th this normally comes when the vehicle becomes very old and customer insists on ki i want to continue with the od policy even if you issue with a uh, minimum value so this is the minimum value for which an comprehensive policy can be issued okay i have mentioned the tp premium also the questions have come uh, where they directly ask the tp premium for that class of vehicle it is not possible for obviously for uh, to remember and mug up everything but uh, i have at least mentioned it for private car and two wheeler 
so uh, one more thing the minimum value is meant for only uh, od section or for the tp section sir what is the use of tp uh, what is the man uh, uh, how is this material in tp section what is the value why is it required for tp portion anyway for issuing a tp policy yeah. we keep the heading of the vehicle as zero only right for third party yeah no no in the heading you have mentioned that a uh, premium for the tp policy na so that's why i'm asking so that is the third party premium i am informing you this okay and premium this premium is minimum value for the third yeah and premium. that value should be taken accordingly that vehicle yeah yeah this premium is tp premium i just want okay. to size it yeah, yeah. instead of putting in different slides so i just give the third party premium so that you will get through it you will at least remember something because question got got got, got it what is the tp premium this is just for putting both the things in one slide i put that i i should have entered tp there to avoid the confusion it is a tp premium or that class of vehicle because questions have come directly for asking for tp premium also that is why okay uh similarly for two wheelers also minimum value is 5000 rupees for 75 cc vehicle for 75 to 150 also 5000 rupees 150 to 350 6000 more than 350 7000 rupees or oh, you have to remember this thing also see if you'll go if you'll go into tariff they are mentioning or giving the minimum value for various categories of vehicles under commercial vehicle also if you have the strength or the stamina to mug up that you can do that because i am not inserting into my slide because i do not think uh, you can mug up so much so at least for private car or two wheeler i am telling you because till now questions have come from private car and two wheeler only for the minimum values but if you'll go through tariff they have they are mentioning the minimum value for different different class of vehicles also okay so it is sir this to... premium is also need to buy man your choice again i am telling you i have seen a question when i was appearing from class 1 to 2 from uh, sorry 1 to 2 uh, they directly asked they gave the cc and asked for the tp premium anything can come ma'am there is no uh, i cannot say it cannot come at least remember what you can so that's why i am telling you i have put it for two wheeler and private car only because it is not possible uh, for anyone to that's why i am telling till last year i used to tell that do, do not mug imt do not mug imt but last year there were two to three questions in all the scales 1 to 2 also 2 to 3 3 to 4 4 to 4 every scale they are asking imt so what can i say ma'am that you have to learn then you have to mug up then what can i say? if you choose to ignore then okay i can ignore two or three question even if it comes then that is totally your decision right it is my responsibility to inform you because it is not practically possible for me also yes sir i got it because uh, because in some fire and all they are telling ratings and all will be changing you should not buy god so this particular premium will not be changed right so no, that we fire, can fire is, fire is different ma'am because a uh, fire uh, is rating are different for different insurers so obviously they will not ask you that right for kacha construction it is fixed 4% that can be asked otherwise rating you do not have to remember in fire but for motor third party policy third party premium is government governed by government and it is fixed for all the insurers so that is the common thing that got it sir okay tariff for commercial vehicles in case of commercial vehicles there are various type of vehicles first is goods carrying vehicle trailers miscellaneous type of vehicles road risk road transit road transit risk road risk and internal risk policy see uh, i'll go fast fast okay because we have to cover a lot of slides in a limited period of time left okay first is goods carrying vehicle for goods carrying vehicle is further classified into four categories of vehicle a1 a2 a3 a4 all of you know this thing a1 is public carrier a2 is private carrier a3 is public carrier for three wheelers and pedal cycles or e cart a4 is private carrier three wheelers and for private carriers okay uh imt 21 23 concept i have already informed to you okay uh in case of passenger carrying vehicles there are four sections c1 c2 c3 c4 this has directly been asked so remember a1 a2 a3 a4 what is a1 a2 a3 a4 what is c3 c1 c2 c3 c4 many times in scale 1 to 2 or 2 to 3 directly also have been asked what is c1 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 is or the three wheelers and four wheelers not exceeding six passenger capacity so what is c2 four wheeler more than six passengers three wheeler more than 17 passengers so you have covered three wheeler not exceeding 6 in c1 more than 17 in c2 so where will you fit 6 and 6 to 17 passengers that you will fit under c3 category okay 
and for C4 is two wheeler private car. Rem just remember this thing. Yes, miscellaneous type of vehicles. I will uh, tell you two or three important points here. What is what happens in miscellaneous type of vehicles? Uh, overturning. First concept is overturning. I told you that overturning as a tool of trade is not covered. Overturning as a tool of trade is not covered and has to be insured separately in some type of vehicles. What are those type of vehicles? Mobile cranes, mechanical navies, shovels, grabs, rippers, excavators, dragline excavators, and mobile drilling rigs. Overturning has to be separately covered in these type of vehicles. Remember this. Many times, many times questions are coming from this thing. Okay. Apart from this, apart from this, uh, dumpers, milk vans, oils, petroleums, refrigeration units, tankers, sippers, electrical vehicles, tractor engines, tractors, trolleys, all these vehicles used to be assigned under Miss D class of vehicles. But since 2013, I guess, 13 or 14, there is a separate circular in which all these vehicles have been taken out out of miscellaneous type of vehicles and have been put under public goods carrying vehicles. So now these vehicles are not underwritten under Misty vehicles. They are underwritten under goods carrying vehicles. So uh, dumpers, uh, these dumpers are not a Misty type of vehicle now. It is a goods carrying vehicle. So mobile cranes, mechanical navies, shovels, grabs, rippers, excavators, dragline excavators, mobile drilling rigs. On these seven, eight type of vehicles, overturning has to be covered separately. Second concept, it is possible for some type of vehicles under motor, uh, these uh, motor uh, vehicles that either a motor policy or a non-motor policy in the form of CPM policy, you must be studying engineering, CPM policy can be issued. What are those type of vehicles? These are, I mentioned 10 types of vehicles are there for which either a motor policy or both or both can be issued. Okay. These type of vehicles are mostly used at construction site. For example, mobile cranes, mechanical navies, shovels, grabs, forklift trucks, bulldozers, excavators, drilling rigs, dumpers, mobile clients, site leveling and vehicle used in construction equipment. So these type of vehicles, for these type of vehicles, non-motor policies can also be issued. And what are the non-motor non policies? CPM policies. Okay. Transit risk. See, uh, many people do not understand the difference between class E and class F. Please understand the difference between class E and class F. Class E is transit risk. Transit is the keyword here. What do you mean by transit? Transit means when a vehicle is transferred from one place to another or when a vehicle is moving from one place to another, it is known as transit. So transit risk policy is issued for unregistered vehicles which are moving or which are under the care of manufacturers mostly. Okay for tra transit from one point to another. For example, example, I'm just putting an example. For example, Tata Motors is there. Tata Motors have some vehicles manufactured with them. Obviously, the vehicles are not registered. Neither they are sold to a dealer. So if Tata Motor is, uh, for example, they are doing a rally of their vehicles. So those unregistered vehicles while on road from one place to another are to be covered, right? For that type of policies, which are issued for a specific transit only motor transit risk policy is issued. Okay. So in these motor transit policies, uh, what is depends on, it depends on the kilometer. It has to travel. It depends on the kilometer. It has to travel. Now to my surprise last year, they asked, there is a slab. If you will go through Reckner or through uh, tariff also, there is a big table given for 200 kilometers point this percent of IDV, 200 to 500 kilometers this percent of IDV, 500 to this, 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 this. Big table is given up to 3,600 kilometers, I guess. Last year, they asked a question, ki, he has to travel 450 kilometers. What will be the premium? See, I do not think this type of question should be asked because it is not practically possible for anyone to learn that slab. Okay. But last year, there was a question. Because I should not, I should at least inform you that it came. But if, because, but, but it is not possible for anyone to remember this thing. Because that chart, that chart itself is like uh, this kilometer to this kilometer, this percent of ID with this. So this, remember this thing at least, that the transit risk policy premium depends on the kilometer that vehicle has to travel. So it depends on the kilometer 
that rating depends on the kilometer okay but the last year there was a question so i don't know what the examiner was trying to check but uh, there was a question related to that okay so premium depends on the distance it has to travel okay no what in case of trade uh, road risk uh, th that is a transit policy now now comes to road risk policy what is road risk policy now the vehicle for example a, a unregistered vehicle has come in custody of a dealer dealer means a, a seller for example now what will the dealer say i am explaining it to you in a very practical life what dealer will do dealer will have a stockyard where he will stock his like 100 vehicles 100 cars all of them will be unregistered he has probably like 10 showrooms he will transfer his vehicles from that stockyard to showroom obviously that vehicle will be unregistered there may be distance of 5 kilometers but in 5 kilometers obviously he will not load it into a truck and then bring to this he might do that also but while that vehicle or that vehicle may be used for demonstration purpose okay for example, if you are going to see a, you, everyone wants to test drive the car, uh, that vehicle. So they are using that unregistered vehicle for test drive also. So for all those, for covering the risk of all those vehicles, which are unregistered, but still use road risk policies issued. So road risk policies issued normally in two ways, name driver basis and trade certificate basis. 99.9% .9 in practical life, it is issued on the basis of trade certificate issued. Because the trade certificate is given by RTO to that dealer, okay, the trade certificate is annually issued to that dealer for use of that vehicle while transferring from stockyard to showroom for demonstration purpose or even for private use. There is a loading for everything. For demonstration, it has to be loaded. If you, if you would have underwritten the policy in the system also, you can check additional uh, demonstration 12% loading is there. For using for private use, some loading is there. For use for the vehicles or the directors of that company, there is some loading. Okay, but it is this road risk policy is issued for covering the risk of those unregistered vehicle. Okay. Now, what is the questions that can be asked? It can be on name driver basis or trade certificate basis. Second, it can be used for demonstration purpose. Extra premium has to be paid. Okay. It can be used for tuition driving purpose also. Okay. It can be used for private use extension also. Private use extension. I, here, you do not have to remember the rate, obviously, because it will depend on various companies. To In tariff, the common rates are given. But at least you should remember ki it these type of vehicles can be used for demonstration purpose. They can be used for tuition driving purpose. They can be used for private use also. Okay. So this is the main thing, which is the difference between transit policy and road risk policy and internal risk policy is altogether a different type of policy what does internal risk policy cover the word itself says internal risk so that means wherever the vehicle mostly wherever the vehicle is in the custody of a repairer or is in his workshop and anything happens to vehicle or anything happens to any third person there or to the uh, 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 property of that uh, uh, manufacturer or the repairer also for covering the risk while the vehicle is under repair in that workshop motor trade internal risk policy is issued hardly these type of policies are issued in practical but in exams questions have been coming from internal risk policy first first question which might come which what type of policy let me complete first then you can ask for doubt internal risk policy which type of policy is there in motor which have a limited liability so limited liability will always be under motor trade internal risk policy why limited liability first question is why limited liability because property damage what are the limit for property damage 7.5 lakh rupees right in third party property damage in case of motor trade internal risk this limit has been capped this limit has been capped to 1.5 lakh rupees only so there is a limited liability point number one second thing internal risk policy can be of two types it can either be only a liability policy or it can be a package policy covering the own damage and third party section both now let us first come to liability policy liability policy if there is a bodily injury the liability is unlimited just like any other motor policy but 
if there is any property damage but not to vehicles if there is any property damage excluding damage to vehicles what is the liability 1.5 lakh rupees in normal trend how much it is 7.5 lakh rupees so there is a difference here so liability is capped here so liability is limited here whenever a question comes in motor where is the limited liability where is an exception to the normal liability answer will be internal risk policy obviously if liability policy we are covering only two things bodily injury and property damage so bodily injury is unlimited liability property damage is capped to 1.5 lakh only now come to package policy third party liability is unlimited but property damage liability is capped to 1.5 lakh rupees now damage to vehicles if there are third party vehicles so my vehicle is there in that uh, workshop so for that third third party vehicle the maximum property damage will be 1.5 lakh rupees only 1.5 lakh rupees only and if insured own vehicle got damaged in his premises what will be the liability 50000 rupees liability only so you have to remember this thing ki total liability to third party vehicles total liability to property damage is 1.5 lakh rupees and damage to his own vehicles is 50000 rupees so this is the only policy in motor where there is a limited liability okay second thing second thing this is the only policy where for you know you, uh, you think what happens maximum in these parts there is a workshop and near to workshop mostly they have a open air car air space where they uh, service vehicles put there or some vehicles waiting for to be serviced or repaired are kept there so this is the only policy where they cover open air park also okay Th third thing more than one premises can also be covered for example he has a stock uh, keeping uh, various repairs for uh, stocking the vehicles and then shifting them to his workshop if the difference between the two premises is within 450 meters then more than one premises concept can also be issued together in case of motor trade internal risk policy and the premium for motor trade internal risk policy depends mostly on the area and the wage so these are the four five important or different concepts which makes an internal risk policy different from other type of policy first there is a limited liability for third party property damage there is a limited liability for damage to third party vehicles which is capped at 1.5 lakh there is a limited liability for damage to own vehicles that is capped at 50000 rupees there is this is the only policy where open air car park are can be covered or more than one premises can be covered okay so this is the concept of motor trade road risk policy road risk is for one journey one place to another place for an unregistered vehicle mostly under the custody of the manufacturer second is sir question yes uh, sir, about internal road risk, uh, about internal risk policy, uh, that does it mean that the policy has been taken by the garage owner or automobile yeah. owner? Okay, that is the first thing. Okay, but the, it said the vehicle when we hand it over to the garage owner, uh, garage owner or garage or to the automobile owner, our motor policy also exists at the same time. When they uh, uh, then how uh, the our motor vehicle is get insured under that policy that is irrespective of the motor vehicle it is the, it that mean can we explain this sir sir see what will happen is in my 12 or 13 years of career i have never seen a motor trade internal risk policy okay firstly this policy is normally in books only first thing because of its limited coverage i am putting my vehicle to some xyz workshop if something happens for example my vehicle was lifted it came in between some another vehicle and totally damaged what will i do i will claim under my policy normally which will have the liability of 1.10 lakh rupees for example i am aware that his even if he has a policy 99.999 percent he will not have any policy to cover that he will try to cover that policy in my od policy only and secondly even if he has there is a limited liability or the limited cover for that vehicle for example 1.5 lakh rupees only that is the reason this policy is hardly sold in the market in my my life i have not seen i am working in new india from last 12 years I have not seen a single internal risk policy. Although I have worked in motor department quite a long period of time, still I have not seen any type of policy. The major reason is that because it has a limited liability. So in practical life, this is only for theoretical purposes. You can say that. Okay. 
that the gist is only that the, as soon as the vehicle enter in the premises of the automobile owner or garage owner our vehicle get automatically uh, insured that means get covered through his policy if he has irrespective of the, if he has if he has yes that, that is the thing okay for 1.5 ha yes 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 limited liability yeah limited liability got so it that is that is why nobody takes this policy right the manufacturer yeah, what thanks. he do he will he will claim under your policy you will not even come yes. to know how the damage happened right yes yes certainly so, thank you that policy have a limited uh, liability so that is the reason this policy is hardly sold in the market but for examination point of view you should know this thing if these are the uh, peculiar characteristics of this uh, internal risk policy for which uh, questions can come sometimes okay these are all very easy things uh, you all know this thing uh, dl uh, driving license i am putting it here in this slide uh, what is the minimum uh, age criteria sometimes question comes ki what is the age criteria for driving because there is a change uh, in the dl uh, limit recently so just remember these things also because for example hazardous license previously it was used for one year now it has been issued for three year uh, similarly for tra transport vehicle also i think previously the dl was issued for three years now it has been issued for Five years. So this remember this thing, right? This I do not have to explain much. A uh, motor department survey fee also question in higher scale sometimes might come because this is common for all the insurance companies. You okay? This is the loss. How much is the survey fee payable? I have inserted a question also. Uh, so you can just try that. This is the uh, survey fee slab. Okay. Uh, MISP. Yes. Uh, just go through MISP. I'll explain it in one uh, thing. in 2017 first november 2017 concept of misp which is motor insurance service provider scheme what is misp misp is a motor dealer misp is a motor dealer which is appointed by a insurer or intermediary to distribute or distribute them or provide the services to motor insurance policies normally the dealers are the misp here okay what is their servicing they have to service the policy they have to provide the claim services also as per the books okay so what are the concept objective of misp objective was to have a regular oversight about over the automobile dealers this concept came in 2017 by that concept they have fixed the liability or the fixed the remuneration for the motor dealers for two wheelers it was 22.5% for other than two wheelers it was 19.5% many times this question comes ki what is the remuneration 19.5% and 22.5% and it is known as distribution fee this remuneration is known as distribution fee and who are the misps misp are normally the automobile dealers second thing now a misp can work misp can work with one or more insurers for example a maruti dealer is there he is working with 10 insurance companies right we are treating him as a misp so one misp can work with more than one insurers but can he work with more than one or more intermediary no he has to work with one intermediary only for example maruti is using intermediary as uh, maruti as a broker itself he is using that as a intermediary so a misp can work with more than one insurers but he cannot work with more than one intermediary remember this concept okay now they have a concept of designated person so an misp will nominate a person who shall be responsible uh, sir clear for... once again that uh, can work only for one intermediary difference between intermediary and intermediary insurance. what happens is what happens is ma'am most of the dealers or most of the tie ups right they are through some intermediary for example aditya birla is one intermediary right for example hyundai business all the hyundai dealers across india are placing or using the services or the platform provided by aditya birla for example i'm just giving example so what is happening is we are paying 19.5% to aditya birla aditya birla is keeping 1 or 2% from the 19.5 for providing the platform to the dealer or the misp dealer and passing for example 17.5 to the dealer so that dealer all across dealers all across india are using that one platform for servicing of mi as, a, as an misp so that that intermediary through which they are using the platform or selling the policies so one misp can work with only one intermediary but they can work with various insurers for example a maruti dealer is working with 10 insurance companies but through 
to where it is he is working with an insurance company to that platform provided by that intermediary so one misp can work with only one intermediary at a time okay but he can work with multiple insurers okay that is the main concept which you should remember and appointment of misp uh, sir, sir give example of multiple insurer ma'am a maruti dealer for example maruti dealer is issuing policies for 10 insurance companies new india also national also united also ifco also icsa also so he is working with multiple insurers right we are every insurance company is paying 19.5% of the policies issued to the intermediary and intermediary is passing on that to the dealer so a dealer is issuing policies for all the insurers right he is not just working with new india assurance so that is the classic example so ma'am here intermediary is maruti insurance broker limited broking private limited exactly sir right all across india all the maruti dealers are working service using the services of maruti insurance dealers or maruti insurance broking right for issuing the so that is the intermediary and in misp i am telling you we are not directly giving 19.5% to the dealer we are giving 19.5% to to intermediary because that is a total remuneration including the intermediary services so intermediary is keeping a certain portion uh, portion of it with himself and passing the next to the dealers all across india so that is why an misp work can work with multiple insurers but he should work with only one intermediary only and appointment of misp is based on pan number pan number okay designated person misp nominates the person who should be responsible for its compliances a question has come what is the minimum qualification for a designated person a designated person should be at least 12th pass and undergo training for a point of sale person okay okay and that designated person is given a unique identification based on his aadhar number so appointment of misp is for pan number but appointment of designated person is from aadhar number remember this thing it might be asked in the exam so few important points in misp is remuneration remuneration is 19.5% and 22.5% one misp can work with multiple insurers but has to work with one intermediary only misp appointment of misp is based on its pan number okay designated person is appointed by misp who appoints the designated person misp what is the minimum qualification for an misp he should be to, uh, for a designated person he should be 12th pass what is the unique uh, id for a designated person his aadhar number these are the all the important questions which can come from msp every year one or two questions are coming from msp okay that's all that is all the major things i wanted to tell you uh, anything has uh, anything uh, anyone wants to ask me something they can ask me otherwise we'll wind up the class it's already 9:45 i think can you share the ppt sir yes i tried to cover as maximum as possible uh for the motor od so that the basic concepts of numericals or how the questions come in exam are clear to you okay based on my experience uh that is all uh, if anything sir, sir you'll share this ppt sir yeah i'll definitely share it uh, on the yeah, thank you sir, why the wonderful class sir thank you it has come into the picture what is the uh, benefit of this i am uh, sp sir misp ma'am yes. uh, they want to the iida wanted to have a regulatory uh, control over all the dealers previously what used to happen is dealers used to directly bargain with insurers for example with new india they will tell we uh, new india used to give them 30% icic used to give 40% of the business place so there was no regulatory framework okay so the to frame that regulatory framework and everybody should give equal uh, commission or the incentive to the dealer that is why okay thank you sir the session was very thank you so much pratik ji sir participant from united india it was a wonderful session sir uh, anything uh, uh, given sir? sir depreciation on radiator and condenser metallic metallic yes okay thank you okay. sir uh, yes ma'am i want to solve more practical question sir for motor policy from where to solve sir Ma'am, just try exploring as much as possible. I tried to give you four to five examples in this question, uh, in while this discussion. Uh, most of the questions will be based on the similar tricks only. Just remember okay. the basic concept. 
uh, and how to solve the problem. Remember, first step, age of the vehicle. Second step, depreciation. These are the two important things. If you will go through them correctly, you will be able to solve the question 100% now. Okay, sir. Sir, glass ceiling test. Sir, one more thing, sir. So, can uh, you please tell glass ceiling test? Plastic, ma'am. Uh, sir, if only a radiator, then what is the depreciation? Metallic, sir. Only radiator. Radiator condensor sir, condensation case में, sir, in addition to case में engine sir, 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 uh, thank you, Pratik, sir. It was a nice lecture. And uh, I assure all participants, uh, PPT will share in uh, Telegram group. Thank you, Pratik, thank sir, you for sparing your time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Thank, thank, you, sir. thank, thank you, sir. Thank, thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Pratik, sir, you can uh, end the lecture uh, yes, session. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Exactly. I'm doing that.